It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Renee Ritchie's here. Andy Anako's here. Rosemary Orchard stops by. We're going to talk about all the new things Apple released yesterday, including Apple Fitness Plus, the new kind of nutrition uh, notices for privacy, iOS 14.3, Watch 7.2, Mac OS Big Sur 11.1, .1, all of that coming up in just a little bit. Stay tuned. Mac Break Weekly is next. Mac Break Weekly comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Securing every access point in your company does not have to be a challenge. LastPass unifies access and authentication to make securing your employees simple and secure, even when they're working remotely. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 744, recorded Tuesday, December 15th, 2020. What does the duck say? This episode of Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by ArmorLock. Take control of your data privacy with G Technologies ArmorLock NVMe SSD. Never again compromise speed for security. Go to getarmorlock.com to learn more and get yours today. And by Forward Networks. Forward Networks reduces business risk by revolutionizing the way large networks are managed. Their advanced software delivers a digital twin of the network, a completely accurate mathematical model in software. Get a demo at forwardnetworks.com slash twit. And by Twilio. Strengthen your customer relationships by uniting communications across your entire business. Get everything you need to build and deliver new customer experiences with Twilio. Go to Twilio.com to learn more. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that's all about Apple with our fabulous hosts. Renee Ritchie's here from uh, St. Vieter Bagels in Montreal. <laughs> I, I wish. wish. <laughs> I wish. It's good to see you, Renee. How is everything on your uh, end of the world? Is it cold up there? Yeah, it's getting cold, but luckily we have those St. Vieter bagels and their uh, unique, mm. uh, well, both St. Vieter and a fair amount have an exception where they're allowed to still use the traditional wood burning ovens to make their bagels. I was actually uh, so. concerned about that because uh, uh, last year there was some um, commotion from the Montreal city government saying they were going to ban yeah. those, so they didn't. Good. No, not so far. They have at least a modicum of respect for the history with which they <laughs> pretend to oppress us. I, in order to offset to their carbon neutrality, I have actually purchased a wood pellet pizza oven <laughs> so I can make bagels. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> and Lori Gill not being on the show every week is going to save you a fortune in backyard barbecue <laughs> money. It smokes like a mofo. <laughs> That's Andy Anako laughing in the background. It's good to see you, Andrew. He's wearing his Canadian teapot hat. My, no, my uh, my Pixar uh, render man, like from the from from a trade show when they had the show in uh, in Canada. Yeah, it's got the, a maple leaf. Yeah, yeah. Yes, one of my it's, this is this is one of my favorite hats, and I have to like sort of like not wear it out anymore because I don't want to wear it out. It's starting to wear out, but that's part of the. Charm. Well, it's it's yeah, it's like well like well I've I've made this I've made this MacWorld 2002 shirt. Holy cow! Last. See, this is this is what we're talking Holy about. See, if you, you take care of, you take care of your clothes, you invest in, in high quality stuff that you buy at the souvenir <laughs> stall. But he's vintage today. Also yes. filling in, uh, of course, uh, for those of you who don't know, Lori Gill took a job with the fruit company. Dang it! <laughs> so uh, we we've had an empty seat last week was Merlin Mann. I'm thrilled to have Rosemary Orchard on this Hi. week. Hello from I want to say Oxford. Uh, no, no. I'm just outside of Bristol. And Bristol. I love the fact that I'm currently showing up as Merlin Mann because I got to talk to him just uh, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. So it's it's great. I, I'm, I'm sticking the name. I'm running with that it. That was all, all done automatically. I apologize. Let's get your lower third right. You are not <laughs> That's Merlin That's all right. Mann. Andy was me. So, you know, we'll just trade until all, eventually at some point did, it'll did, be did fine. Did Andy's lower third say Rosemary Orchard? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God! It's something. <laughs> it. Something's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> I mean, I think we should just go with it's a Christmas joke um, <laughs> slash miracle, and uh, you know, there's gonna there be more magic go. as the show goes on. There we go. I, 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 we quickly, I, I should try, I should try to see if I can get a car loan like before the before the lower third goes away. <laughs> it's too late. It's changed. But, I can see. But I've got ID. See my lower third. Exactly. Uh, see. <laughs> so hey, can, I, can, I, can I just can I just say that I'm I'm very pleased and proud. This is the first uh, streaming show I'm doing with my brand new Mac M1 MacBook. 
Oh, so, congratulations! Exactly. So now, now, now I've, I, I'm not afraid to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight Chrome tabs open at Get the same time. Whereas open. on the on the 2012 Mac Mini, it was like, let's see if we can have Skype open and a Notepad. This is so, nice. That's great. Are you using the camera, the built-in camera? No, no, no. This is this is the same Brio camera I've been using say. with the previous one. Yeah. One, of the, one of the reasons why that kind of prompted why not, I don't want to wait until next year was that I bought this really swell camera actually before they before the pandemic, so before they got scarce, uh, and then found out that no, my twenty my twenty neither my twenty fifteen MacBook uh, Pro nor my twenty twelve Mac Mini. Or had enough like oomph to like, even just deal with 4K input, let alone transcoding it to, to, to HD output. So I'm finally able to actually use it Yay. to its full advantage. Yay. So I'm a happy, I'm, I'm the happiest boy in puppet land right now. You know who's not happy? Up? Poor Rosemary, still on an old Intel Mac. Am I right, Rosemary? You are right, but I'm using the same camera as Andy, so I'm gonna you go with great. it's an overall win. You look so. great, and you yeah. got Christmas lights. Which really yes. adds to the festivity. Well, I had a little bit of time before the show and thought, why not decorate for this? <laughs> are those those uh, twinkle lights, twinkly lights, or? Uh, no, those are my uh, tree, which is in the next room. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want anything too crazy in here. These are just USB powered lights, actually. Oh well, so you got Super some. Super cheap from Amazon. There's a tech angle there. Yeah. Uh, we uh, so uh, today, yesterday, I guess it was, we got iOS. 14.3, we got Watch OS 7.2, we got Big Sur 11.1, Apple TV, I don't know what the number is. Got new app, we got everything updated. Uh, the big update for iOS uh, and Apple TV was really about fit. Well, no, I can't even say that. It was partly about Fitness Plus, which came out yesterday. Has anybody done any workouts on Fitness Plus? Yet? <laughs> Sorry. Uh. Why are you laughing, Andy? <laughs> knee, knee jerk reaction when that's someone asks if I'm doing workouts. I'm <laughs> You're not doing workouts. Okay. Yeah, I'm walking, I ran but, but... into the uh, the unfortunate bug that some people are experiencing where uh, if you uh, try to sign up and you do have a uh, Series 6 Apple Watch, which is right here, complete with my lovely plum solo loop, um, it uh, doesn't offer you the three months free that you're supposed to get. You're supposed oh. to get one month. And uh, so oh. there's a couple of ways around that. Uh, you could unpair your watch and repair it. Uh, but um, I figured that that's you know I'm just gonna wait. Project. Yeah, that's not that's a not. I mean, it only takes about 15 minutes, but then it takes three days for all the other apps to finish installing. Right. Um, exactly. So, and, exactly. Uh, so uh, yeah. yeah. So I decided I'm just gonna hang on, and I, if it doesn't fix itself tomorrow, then I'll I'll chat with Apple support nicely and see if they can sort that out for me. I wasn't too worried about it because I bought Apple One when that became available, and that's part of the yeah. Apple One. So now I'm getting the full value of my Apple One subscription i'm very impressed uh we showed it off earlier today on ios today uh micah and i did a, a few about 30 seconds of a dance workout uh, <laughs> but i'm really impressed it's i mean i've had a peloton which has the same notion it's a spin bike with a big screen on it and instructors in the remote studio are doing both live and recorded things i don't think any of the apple tv uh, i mean uh, the fitness plus stuff is live as far as I can tell, but it's similar feeling. You're watching a, a exercise studio. There's three people. There's the instructor, somebody doing it kind of light, somebody doing it medium, and then the instructor is doing it hard. So you can choose a level of uh, based on your fitness. It, the watch display goes up on the screen, which is great. Shows your heart rate, shows calorie burn, shows your ring closing. Uh, I think, and it's 10 bucks a month. I think Apple's going to do quite well with this. This is a lot cheaper than a gym membership. And if, you know, they've got plenty of things you can do without any equipment. They've got a high intensity interval training, which is, uh, they've got the dance, which is kind of like aerobics. They've got yoga and cool down. But they also have, and I actually really like this because I have the equipment. They have a, a, a stationary bicycle workout, a treadmill workout, and a rowing workout. I like rowing, but... Uh, rowing is kind of mind numbing because so having an instructor say, OK, now you're going uphill or what? I don't know what they say, but <laughs> I'll let you know tonight after I do it. So I think uh, I'm, I'm excited. I think Apple is going to find a, a market of fairly large market of people who don't want to spend a lot of money on a gym membership or these days can't go to the gym. Uh, and I think this is it's Apple doing a very good thing for fitness. 
they also we didn't uh, we showed this on iOS today, and I didn't know about it, but they really expanded the capabilities of the health app. It can now tell you how unfit you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's, thanks, Health App. Thanks, Health App. There's a cardio fitness uh, uh, thing. You have to enable this. Once you do, for instance, um, if I look, I can look at a year of cardio fitness it's since I've been wearing the watch. You can see that the downward trend started. Is your VO2 max more men like mine? Yeah. Well, it started. <laughs> look, oh, how interesting. It started to go down in March <laughs> when, <laughs> when the quarantine began, and it's been it's been a steady decline <laughs> in fitness. Since the quarantine began. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you don't want to see the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> you don't, you know, I, I wonder if that really is part of like, uh, they, they do such a good job with health. I wonder if part of it is realizing that at, at some point the, the numbers are going down enough that we should stop focusing on numbers and start focusing on just simply, hey, you got out today. That's yes, great. You Keep took it a walk. It is, <laughs> you left the building. Yeah. And it ties <laughs> yes. in if you have other devices. I mean, really, this uh, is is mostly watch information, but there's sleep information. I have a sleep tracker. There's so this is becoming slowly, subtly, but now not insignificantly, a a really complete quantified self on the health app. Including, I just got a Bluetooth enabled toothbrush, and I've got I saw that I've got dental health in here as well. And now don't let Georgia see those sleep numbers, Leo, because she'll be all over you the next. <laughs> sleep is not good. <laughs> My sleep is not good. Or maybe do let her see them. Mitchell, give I've you some advice on the next. I've got hand week. washing. I've averaged twenty six seconds. I've got tooth brushing, uh, blood alcohol content. I don't have anything to blow into, so that might be um, <laughs> insulin delivery Saved. number number of times fallen. This is really amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just I'm kind of blown away because they've done it so gradually, but at this point there is a lot of data. It's been collecting, and I think this is good. Yes, do you agree, Renee? Yeah, yeah I think I, I think it was really apt when a, a few months ago, or was it last year? I've lost all track of time uh, and space. When they were talking to Tim Cook, and he said that he thinks when they look back over the long arc of history, the greatest contribution Apple will have made is to health. And I think we're seeing that systematically come up on the small things like the sensors they're putting into the watch, two things like the health app, the new fitness, Fitness Plus, all of the technology that they've been selling. They're they're now making it fully operational, not in a Death Star sense, but in a very like fully operational Star Wars sense of of giving you all the information you could want and then subtly prodding and coaching you into doing something about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it when a business plan and uh, it's a, a, a an aggressive and very, very profitable business plan is not necessarily incompatible with doing good for your customers. And this is exactly the sort of example that I that I think we should all focus on that I, I, Apple gets dinged a lot by, oh God, why is their stuff so expensive? And why is there there's such an ecosystem that you kind of have to buy into? But the thing is, when it comes to health, it's the fact that they are able to say, look, here are, if you, if you uh, the watch will work well with your uh, subscription plan, your subscription plan will run really well with your Apple TV. All these things will, will have a health app that's running on your phone, will have sensors on your phone, as Renee says, and that will allow us to give you to, to make this entire big sticky rice ball of Apple stuff into the most comprehensive and powerful health tool uh, that anybody can ever use. So it's it's, uh, it's it's sometimes it's OK. There's such a thing as benevolent dictatorship. And I think that Apple's relationship with health products is exactly the example that we need. Rosemary, you, you, what do you think? Uh, it's all of, Is it all available in England, in the UK? Yeah, yeah. It all yeah. seems to be available over here. The Apple Store this morning did a, a bit of a refresh to just highlight all of those fancy fitness things that they've got. Uh, I think there was something to do with the jump rope on there, or maybe that was because I was looking at something and I'm remembering a Nintendo Switch thing. Is there a smart jump rope? That would be cool. <laughs> there are smart jump ropes. Um, and what I'm, you know, what I've seen over, you know, the course of 2020, let's be honest, um, is the number of people buying fitness related home stuff yeah. is obviously skyrocketing. Um, and I know this because I was looking at Nintendo Switch games and accessories this morning, not because I don't want to use uh, Fitness Plus. I absolutely will use it, but I like having a big variety of things to Me go too. through. So I've already got Ring Fit, um, right. but there are some other things as well. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be trying a whole bunch of them. I have a Zumba game for Nintendo 
should throw oh, away, which nice. I may regret. Um, I, have the, I bought the ring and I've never used it. It's it's like the ring we use in Pilates. It's a metal yeah. uh, spring ring that's covered in, in, in rubber. What are the exercises on, uh, I feel like, it looks like well, a steering wheel. I thought like maybe some of them would be like driving yeah. games. It's like the Xena <laughs> ring, like you throw it at people? I don't know. What do you do with it, Rosemary? It's called a I chakram. Mean, oh. Basically, Chakram. you do whatever your character on screen is doing. And because it's a story with an adventure that you're trying to solve, oh. you, you end up doing some weird things. So there was one I was doing this morning where you have to hold it behind your head and squeeze it together, oh. um, which, um, you know, and, and there's a whole bunch of stuff. And there's a you put one of the Joy-Cons on your thigh if you're doing that with the Nintendo Switch, which is quite fun. Um, and I love the fact that there are all of these things out there. And I think Fitness Plus is a good one because it doesn't require an you know, if you've got a device, assuming you have at least an iPhone, which, you know, if you've got an Apple Watch at the moment, you pretty much need an you iPhone. Yes. An iPhone. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, there is the family setup thing where oh, somebody right. can set one oh, up right. for, say, yeah. a, a, you know, an older person or a child. Um, but most people are going to have at least an iPhone or an iPad. And so if you've got one of those, you're going to be able to use this, uh, you know, assuming physical capability, which I don't know how accessible things are from that perspective. Um, but I, I do know I saw something earlier today that they've actually integrated AS sell um into um all of the we fitness saw work. that so yeah. micah yeah. and i were watching uh we're doing the dance one and he begins with some he, uh, he just and it's very quick and subtle and i didn't notice it micah said he just did asl all yeah. the instructors yeah. have learned asl so that they can yeah. sign as well as speak the instructions but they toned it down like they said that at first they were doing the whole thing in asl and, and the community actually told them that was too much they too couldn't much. pay attention to all of that yeah, so yeah. now they just do their little, catchphrases their greetings and yeah. their their little shout outs that's yeah. inclusive that's beautiful yeah i think that's really yeah. great and they ages they go from 30 to 60 for the trainers which i think is yeah. you know the older i get the better I saw, the more that I matters saw a to me. guy who looked as old as me i was shocked yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh i have to say i, I was thinking about this because i know you remember i gave my mom an apple watch um for the fall and the and the emergency stuff uh and i didn't set it up i, I she has an iphone uh so she set it up with her 12 pro and uh i've been walking through it but I think that Fitness Plus, she's 87, might be a little too... Mm -hmm. there, I didn't see anything really... There were no chair was, exercises. You can. Like, they show you in the introduction one that, like, with the yoga, you can use a chair for the poses. So oh, okay. they go through that with you. If but I was she did the, the yoga, thing. that would be good. But none of the yeah. other stuff was really doable, I thought. What were you thinking? I was thinking the same thing for my mom, you know, like, like how accessible would it be to her? And I saw some of the chair things. She does Tai Chi now, I think twice a week. Perfect. Um, but you know, like, but on demand, like having this kind of thing available, you never know. Like, or even just the cool downs might be interesting. If they added Tai Chi, I would be really interested. Yeah. Or Qigong or one of the other kind of. Yeah. Uh, but see, I want to learn like proper Chen family Tai Chi, and I'm sure they would put on some sort of American It'd tai be hipster chi, Tai Chi. And then it would be Uncanny Valley for me. Yeah. <laughs> But see, you're you know you're you're a special person. Most of us, or like the boxing, like have like they have boxing in some of the hit stuff, but it's not real boxing. It's a tie. I don't know tie. I don't know what to call it, typo or something. But like if they were doing like actual boxing, and but I'm sure they're going to expand. Like it's the first day. There's there's lots of possibilities there. Right. Yeah. It's going to be great if they have a really big spectrum because I I am the kind of person who. I'll, I'll, I remember to take my hour long walks like every day or every other day. But what would really get me going on this sort of thing is if there were a workout that is really not so much of a workout, just so much of a, Hey, let's do, <laughs> let's just be silly in the middle of the living room for about a half an hour and see how that works. Once, because it's I think clean the house. You, <laughs> well, okay. Well, let's not go, let's not be that, 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 but, that, but that's, that's how that I think what throws a lot of people off of like people like me off of fitness plans like this is that, well, I, I'm not going to buy, I'm not going to spend $200 to buy the special outfit and the special bells. And I'm not going to, uh, and I, uh, I'm, I, I'm not looking to enhance my VO max for my next biathlon. I just want to be a little bit more active. And the, the perception is that uh, the Peloton, for instance, is I'm not going to spend $5,000 on something that's it's trying to train expensive. me to become, I, yeah. but, but it's as, as a gateway drug, so to speak, as a way to say, well, here's, here's something you, you were kind of already paying for because it's part of your bundle. Here is just the, your daily, just sort of like jump up and down for a while and wiggle your arms. That would sort of get you. And then once you start getting into it, 
that's like I, I, once you start looking forward to your 30 minutes of just jump up and down or d just a, like a dance dance revolution sort of a game yes. that I really really like where I'm just, like I just I just want to listen to this really this really uh, Beat Saber is a exactly great like workout that. actually yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't play it because I can't uh, I don't have a Facebook account can I just say how much smarter Andy is than me because I would be the person who would buy all this stuff and not use it and he's at least smart enough <laughs> not to buy this stuff and then not use it was it you Rosemary yeah. who mentioned the uh, office uh, dinner party episode where they briefly visit Michael Scott's garage and it's full of every gimmicky <laughs> as seen on TV as seen on TV thigh master exercise I'm not sure who that is so I don't think that was me okay uh, but yeah okay yeah, yeah. Maybe it was Micah I, I, he's an office I, fanatic we'll blame yeah. Mark Micah yeah I, I'm kind of halfway between Andy and Renee here where I buy some of the stuff and then I don't use it anywhere near enough but at the same time I do have you know I've got Just Dance installed on my iPhone my iPad my Apple TV nice. and my Nintendo Switch nice. and nice. it's fun and you know it, it's one of those things where even if you only do a song then it ends up getting you up and moving and that's I think is a good start and so by giving you know people three months for free there's a fairly good chance that people are gonna go oh yeah i'll sign up for that and they'll do a video and then maybe their doctors will say to them you know early next year hey you know you've really not been very active over the last <laughs> nine months you should probably <laughs> consider you know increasing your daily activity and then they might have another look at it again and i think that 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 would be a good thing because there are a lot of people who over the last nine months have basically ended up sitting in the same chair for 16 hours a day doing not a huge amount of physical activity and it it's not good for us you know as humans I we do so need seen. to get up and move uh, yeah, I mean, I feel seen because this is me. I've been, you know, I've, I mean, I've moved chairs. Um, you know, I've, I've rearranged my office. I've moved house. I've moved country. I've done a few things. But at the same time, the vast majority of my day is spending a good chunk of time sitting in this chair in this room working on this yeah. machine in front of me. And, yes. you know, we, we all need to be aware of what this does to our bodies, which is not great for us. And the fact that even if it is just 20 minutes of yoga or stretching, or even if you just do a cool down, then that's probably yeah. going to be better for you than doing nothing yeah. at all. Can the I, thing can I, I like about this so much. Go ahead, Ryan. Oh, sorry, Andy. I, I, just, I was going to say the thing I like about this so much is that you know, exactly to Rosemary's point, our bodies feed on motion as much as they feed on food. And a lot of us are starving on motion right now. And I like the way they structured it so that you can do it at home. You can do it eventually if you travel. But they also said that some people just go to the gym and they see something like a rowing machine and they don't really know what to do with it. So they never approach it. It's really and nice. And with this, to you have just stick your you. iPhone down yeah. or your iPad. Yeah. yeah. Any equipment that, and they'll expand the amount of equipment, I assume, I presume, because they have treadmills now. And it's the instructors you know, and you get that burn bar to say, yes, I'm, you know, I'm, you don't know who you're beating because Apple privacy, but you know you're beating everybody. And that's the only thing you really care about. I should it's mention. Just, it's well structured for the, that. The Wall Street Journal uh, review said they really liked it, except you have to have an Apple Watch. But I should mention, uh, as it turns out, you don't have to have an Apple Watch. Uh, if you use it, now I'm trying to remember where it was. You could use it without an Apple Watch, I think on the Apple TV. So... On one they did the, say you needed it at first. Like when yes. all the pre-launch stuff said you needed an Apple Watch and then surprise. Yeah. It's uh, just, it, but it's it just works better with the goals. Apple Watch. You're going to be yeah. a lot happier yeah. with the Apple Watch. But and I'm, you get no I'm, metrics without it. Yeah, yeah I'm glad that yeah. they didn't say you have to have an Apple Watch. I, I think if you start the workout on your iPhone or iPad and you're not wearing a watch, it will ask you if you want to start a workout without the watch. But ah. of course, you're not going to get those on-display, on-screen metrics. So it's the uh, opposite of what I said. Best. The Apple TV does require it, but the iPad and the iPhone do not. The Apple TV is so clever, though, because like they didn't use your Apple TV accounts because like let's say, Leo, you're at your mom's place and she has an Apple TV, right. but she doesn't have fitness plus you just tap your watch and it's it's your profile it looks for you uh based on wi-fi right if you have to be on the same yeah. wi-fi network but it finds you on wi-fi so uh when i fired it up last night when i first got it by the way you have to update your apple tv too it saw yeah. lisa's apple watch it saw my apple watch it said yeah who, who, who's 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 doing it so there that is really great yeah you could do it uh, at a, a thinnest client hotel <laughs> it's a very thin yeah it's a very thin <laughs> client it's a 44 millimeter client <laughs> I'm thrilled. I'm just couldn't be more thrilled. Apple also introduced the um, uh, nutrition warnings <laughs> for privacy <Yeah. laughs> uh, in the App Store. There's a big Sir update that does that 11.1, .1, but also on the iOS devices. And uh, we had a little bit of a conversation on uh, iOS today because um, Micah started going through the Facebook 
<laughs> Nutrition Just one label. app calorie, not very private. Yeah, when, when, <laughs> but, but so it, when you do it, the first thing you'll see is Apple's disclaimer that we, this is on inf based on information that comes from the developer. Yeah. We cannot verify it. And of course they can't. What would they do? Send somebody over to the Facebook place? Are you taking good care of that data? They can't do that. <laughs> Mark just slams the door. Yeah. No. Yes. Uh, what? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> keep driving. So, so I think my position on this, and I'm just curious what you all think, is there is stuff that the app requests. Rosemary, Rosemary you're a developer, so tell me if I'm wrong on this. When you when you create an app for these devices, there there are uh, intents that you have to express, permissions you have to ask to say uh, access a contact list or a camera, and we've all seen those before. Mm -hmm. So that part of the privacy label is accurate. It's what this is what the app has said it needs permissions for. But then there's a lot more that it could gather, or that the privacy policy says they gather, that is all just kind of fluff as far as I'm concerned. I, it, the only thing Apple can say for sure is the app is is doing this much. Is that right, Rosemary? As far as I can tell, yes. Um, it, you know, developers I have to sign to say, yes, I, I input this information and I've input it, you know, correctly. Um, and James Thompson, actually the developer of Peacock and Dice has been tweeting a little bit about that uh, this morning. So if people are interested, they should probably uh, look up his Twitter account because um, obviously he's explaining, you know, what's behind, you know, why Peak Elk needs data right. um, and how it's used. Um, but yeah. it is very much up to the developer to say for themselves. Um, you this know, is, this uh, is Facebook's. And yeah. by the way, you have to scroll down a ways to get, it's under the ratings and reviews, app privacy. It says the developer, Facebook Incorporated, indicated that the app's privacy practices may include handling of data as described below. That's basically, it's not an affidavit. It's not, hmm. it's not, they're not under not oath. Binding. It's not well, binding. Well, I'm sure they're also doing their absolute best to avoid any sticky legal problems. Oh, yes. Which, you know, they've done because they've opened up the barrel of sticky legal problems right. and they're dancing on the slightly frozen top going, no, it's it, fine over here. Don't worry about it. In fact, the uh, FTC announced that they're investigating. Well, this is kind of interesting. They're not investigating. They requested from Facebook and 10 other tech companies information about their privacy policies but again it's not a legal investigation it's just information it's a study yeah. so this is the problem it's very hard to see into these companies and unless they get caught out which facebook has many times and all facebook does is go oh uh, it was a bug we're so, it's google too we're sorry uh, well, it won't happen again and then it happens again <laughs> so i don't trust these guys as far as you can throw them which means that the only thing on the nutrition label that's of any use is well, it says the following data may be used to track you across apps and websites owned by other companies. Data linked to you. The following data may be, so there's a lot, of, a lot of weasel words, may be collected and linked to your identity. Privacy practices may vary. I feel like this, you know, for all the noise that people made about, oh, this is terrible. We're just going to end advertising as we know it and all that stuff. Yeah. It isn't, it's pretty anodyne. It's not. I don't think, you know, this is what Facebook says they do. But you could have read that anywhere. I guess it's good to, my fear is that uh, people, as we've seen before, when they actually look at privacy policies, freak out. And one of the problems with the way it works on mobile devices, for instance, if you want to use uh, photos, again, correct me if I'm wrong, Rosemary, but the, the, the permission is very broad. It's like, and so it will say, this company is asking permission to read, write your photos, to share them, to upload them, to download them. Yeah. If In fact, it's often worse than that because it says that yeah, they are asking for permission to access your camera, um, which, you know, how do you freak out a right. grandmother? Ask her to install an app that then to, says, hey, I want to access your camera. Wait, what? And there's, um, there's and no facility built into Xcode to say, oh, no, just for this little thing, all of these are fairly I, broad. I mean, they are getting there. So specifically on the photos example, uh, with iOS 14, we saw the ability to grant an app 
access to a specific subset of photos, nice. um, which, you know, works really nicely until you accidentally grant WhatsApp access to one photo and then wonder why you can't share other things from your camera roll with your right. friends. Right. Um, uh, because it, it, and then you have to go digging around in settings and, and finding that and fixing it. Um, and there doesn't appear to be a way for app developers to link to that specific setting part and uh, say, hey, you know, here's how you go toggle it. Um, which is a bit tricky, but yeah, it, it's one of those things where when you ask for permissions, it feels like, you know, it, it's asking for the world. At the same time, I do feel like a lot of app developers go, oh yeah, but if we do this, then people aren't going to be happy. And so I end up having to input my name and date of birth and my height and my weight for every single app that I download that's vaguely related to health. When if they just popped up a thing, then they could ask me for permission to access that data and fill it in from health. Right. Um, and that would be much easier. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, th I think we we will see improvements there with iOS 15, or at least I hope so. Yeah, getting more granular is good. And as you say, with photos now, you can say allow access to all photos or just select photos. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see more of that. That's good. Renee? Yeah, I mean, there, it's always a concern to me because you do have dialogue fatigue and you do have, like, right. we're having this huge debate about, uh, this is another topic, but we're having this huge debate about the, the Chrome installer because you don't get to consent to it anymore. And I'm a big, I think consensual computing is incredibly important and it's got a huge tradition on the Mac. Uh, and all of these things, Apple's been very good at pushing them out uh, increasingly through iOS and then bringing them back to the Mac so that you have to agree to everything. And I think if you haven't used the Mac for a while and you install Catalyst, Alina or Big Sur, you will be shocked at how many of those pop-ups you get. Like, can I access your documents folder? Can I access the downloads folder? Can I access the desktop folder? Can I access your photos, your contacts? And I do worry that it's getting overwhelming and that we might need to figure out a way to present a unified sheet to people because the last thing you want is them just to click, okay, okay, leave me alone. Stop. Why are all these pop-ups? Yeah. I have work to do. Uh, so I think there is there's a very, very fine balance. I do like these nutrition labels because they're they're not modal. They don't get in your way. They just, they give you information. It's an informational I, dialogue. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Apple's put theirs in the weirdest place imaginable. Like if you want to see them for a built-in app, you've got to go to support, find the list and go to the individual app pages in the support to see them. And I wish that they would put those. That in the was an early complaint up. though. Uh, yeah. WhatsApp was complaining that they had to tell people, but Apple didn't. Uh, was that a late change that Apple said, oh no, no, we, you do, we do. Uh, in response to WhatsApp, or had it was just that WhatsApp didn't know that? I think nobody could find them. No so one knew it was knew. there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and there, there is, there is bland as you'd expect. Like we don't collect anything. Thanks for reading this form. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but I, I still think you know, just for appearances' sake, it'd be good if they were in that pop up that you get the first time you open a new, like an updated app on iOS. I agree. Yeah. Um, all right. By the way, here's the jump rope, Rosemary. I found one. Uh, oh, the, yes, that's the one. Yep. Factory, Tangram Factory, Smart Rope, LED Jump Rope Medium. But as far as like, I don't know if it has a health, it, it lights up. Um, I, you pair it with the Smart Gym app. So you, you have to, I would love yeah, to see it, it in fitness. Yeah, it syncs with health kit. It oh, it does sync right, with, oh the yeah, there it is. I see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you can even, I don't know, what, what would be the stat? You jumped a thousand times today. <laughs> I don't know. The, I mean, I, it's got 23 LEDs. What do they do? Ah, oh. <laughs> they display your fitness data in midair, it says. Huh? Yeah. Can people behind you read what's going on with you? I, I think somebody may need to get one of these for science. I'm guessing Andy is not about to volunteer, but Renee might? Well, they have a $49 <laughs> rookie model or the $80 non-rookie model, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I got one of the Apple uh, yoga mats, so, you know, obviously I have Did no you? consideration. For Did you? I had to because I want to know what Apple thinks is a yoga Because, like, the Apple store shop buyers... They, they are incredibly fussy and they're not usually price sensitive, but it, but they're also not also the value. It doesn't always provide the value that I think they think they do, it does. So I was just really curious as to what a yoga mat from an, an Apple store. Wait a minute. It's 78 a bucks, mat. a 78 no, there's, a more, there's a more expensive. That's the low. That's the cheap one. That's the peasant one. That's the else. cheap one. There's then there's 120. <laughs> pro one. Yeah. What the oh pro God. yoga <laughs> mat. Give me a freaking break. Yeah. Yoga right, mat should be $4. So they're just pieces of rubber. Oh, so here's no, a tip Leo. for everybody that hasn't figured this out already. You copy the product name from the Apple store, you go yes. on Amazon and buy it at half the price because that's what you yes. do with the Eero. Really? 
Ah. Yeah, the Eero, so the Eero is still available in the Apple Store aren't even the Eero 6 models, uh, which are available already in the U.S. They're not over here. They haven't passed certification. Um, but if you buy them directly from Amazon, they're way cheaper, uh, which, you know, makes sense because they're an Amazon company. But they're also sold in the Apple Store. And often yeah. things are around about the same price. And the Atmo Weather Station is usually about the same price in the Apple Store as it is on Amazon. But some things are just way it's cheaper. The same price in Amazon. It's the same price on Amazon. Amazon, but they offer a less expensive beginners. <laughs> that's just that's just criminal talk. Well, who'd offer a less expensive version of a product, Leo? What, what is this less expensive? You I'm about? a pro. I need the hundred twenty dollar pro love yoga. A. Matt love it. Um, wow. As far as I'm concerned, a yoga mat is there for one reason to keep your feet from slipping. I don't, yeah, I don't really understand why this is so expensive. It's, it's probably made you know, from reclaimed space shuttle, uh, re entry foam that yeah. is guaranteed to last but your burn a, ring for three years. We have years. a short video about how we calculated the chamfer angle on the edge of this mat. Jeez, actually, we'd like you to watch it now. They do, believe it or not. Also, the purple oh, color is called magic. <laughs> it's impossible to make a joke about Apple being too fussy and been too stuffy about style. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. What's she doing? Is she sprinkling rice sprinkled generously with sea salt? What is this? What is going on? What's strange? Is she, she going to sous vide herself? What's going on here? <laughs> she is going to taste good after smoking. Um, go. Wow. That's what I do. Exactly what I do to my ribs. <laughs> Let's sit for 24 hours. Are, are you sure that's not a big tortilla? Maybe what she's going to. Wait a minute. Now. Black beans. What is she doing? Rice. So you're she supposed to. She's wiping it. You have to, you have to salt it before you use it? <laughs> The earth. You have to salt the earth, Leo, after what you bury someone. What is going on? Well, I've never done any of this stuff. So and now the problem it's with perfect. this is I have carpet inside. Yeah. And if I do that, I'm never going to get the salt yeah. out. But she's got an excellent down downward dog. Very, very well done. That's yeah. good. Enjoy the process. It's going to take you a day or two. You're going to see salt that, that's what I've, That's why I've been screwing up. I haven't been, I've been using like Morton's table salt. <laughs> that's why I can't get the downward dog going. I just, yeah, that's it. I'd like to see you do a downward dog, Andy. That would be... Uh, well, uh, ch 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 uh, I'll give you links by OnlyFans. Uh, you, there is, a, I think that's at the $15 level. But... <laughs> OnlyFans, baby. I'd also like to point out Manduka also sell a yoga mat cleaner, which is a organic yoga mat renew spray cleaner with essential oil for $35. Oh, my goodness. So you can get all of the accessories or you can do what I did a while ago and just buy a very cheap yoga mat and let yeah. Renee Ritchie do the testing of the fancy and, one. And be happy with it. <laughs> I just use whatever packing material I have available. Came in the Amazon box for the actual thing I bought. It's just, I think that's fine. Let's take a little break. We're going to have uh, more in just a bit, but I have to pay for my yoga mat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, my friends, this is brand new from G Technology. This is Armor Lock. How many? I know a lot of you are working the in the trades where you maybe you put uh, edited TV shows and movies on hard drives to send them to clients. Maybe you put specs on hard drives. Maybe like me, you carry a hard drive around with you all the time for backup. What I'd really like is a hard drive that is encrypted, that is secure, so if somebody else got it, they uh, they couldn't get access to it. That's probably what you like. This is Armor Lock. It's a very fast NVMe SSD drive. This is uh, the latest USB 3.2. It's very fast. Let me plug it in because I'm going to show you the coolest part. When you first plug it in, can you see that? It is, it is locked. And there's no way to unlock it. You can't mount it. You can't see it. What you do is you get your phone. There's a Mac app as well, so iPhone or Mac, and you open the Armor Lock app. So it can see the Armor Lock. It uses Bluetooth LE to see the hard drive. I tap it. It uses Face ID. It uses authentication on the iPhone. Now the Armor Lock is unlocked. In fact, it popped up with all of my stuff on it, and this is on Windows. It works on uh, any computer. I actually formatted this. Uh, I think XFAT so that I could run it on Windows and Mac. And I've got all my most vital stuff on here. PGP keys, password vaults, all of that stuff stored on a drive that I can carry around with me. That's Armor Lock. If you want somewhere secure, somewhere fast, it's an SSD, NVMe, uh, easy to carry, 2 terabytes. It's IP67, dust and water resistant. 
Uh, it's using the same encryption technology that a file vault uses, 256-bit AES XTS, full disk encryption. And I love it that it uses the biometrics on the phone uh, or, your, or your Macintosh for the unlocking. Uh, this is a great way to share drives because I can add people to my armor lock. I can say, I'm going to send this to Joe, and he can be authenticated to open the armor lock. Uh, it's, of course, G technology, which anybody who's used a Mac for any length of time. I remember Scott Bourne would only buy drives with the big G on it, and he had <laughs> tons of them uh, stacked up in front of his uh, Macintosh. They manufacture not only their own SSDs, they manufacture the controllers as well. So this is high quality. In fact, they just won the Consumer Innovation Award at the Flash Memory Summit. If you are transporting data of any kind, whether it's your own data or movies or films or TV shows, if you're worried about lost or stolen drives, if you want security, G Technologies Armor Lock NVMe SSD is amazing. They say, we overthought security, so you don't have to. I am so impressed by this. And by the way, when I'm done, I just press the locked icon on here, locks it up, and I can, it unmounts it, and I can remove it from the computer. It couldn't be easier. Take control of your data privacy with G Technologies Armor Lock NVMe SSD. If you go to GetArmorLock.com, you'll find it there. Highly recommend it. I'm a big fan. GetArmorLock.com. And please use that URL so they know you saw it here on Mac Break Weekly. GetArmorLock.com. Now I can eject... Unplug, and it's fully encrypted, locked, and secure. I keep this. Finally, I have something I can carry around, and this is two terabytes, so I can carry on all my data uh, in my uh, in my bag without having to worry about somebody getting a hold of it. Thank you, Armor Lock, for your support of Mac Break Weekly. I see Renee Ritchie. I spy with my little eye. I see Rene Ritchie wearing a very attractive pair of headphones on his head there. Giant honking cans? Is that what you're... <laughs> Giant honking cans. Actually, uh, I loved Gruber's take on this. He said, heavy is the head that wears the AirPods Max. <laughs> <laughs> Little takeoff on Shakespeare. Um, how heavy are they? Are they... Do you, do you... They're heavy, but they're... The thing I notice most is that they are so comfortable compared to every other Puro. I, I, I stopped wearing over-the-ear headphones a long time ago because they always just pinched my glasses right. or they compressed my ears right. or they just they felt weird on my head. And these, they have this nice mesh thing here and they have the space foam uh, and the adaptive EQ. If it knows there's a gap because of your glasses or it detects it, I should say, it adapts the EQ to compensate for the the gap in the, in the sound seal. So, so far, I mean, this is my long-term test with them. I'm going to wear them the whole show, but so far it's uh, way more comfortable than I thought they'd be. Comfortable is really important. I wear AKG K240, $69. Yeah. Uh, there, you see them all the time in uh, recording studios and stuff. Yeah. And I wear them on the radio show because they're super comfortable. You can wear them all day. They sound pretty good. F Do these sound $550 good? So it's such a tough question to answer because like people will say I can get the Bose or the Sony's for, you know, 250, 300, 350 depending what the sale price is at any given moment and those are all terrific noise canceling over the ear wireless headphones. Uh, and then when you start getting into the more expensive headphones like the Sennheisers and the Bang Olufsen, those become like reference monitors where you're using them for very specific audio file or literal audio studio needs and these you can't you can't use these for studio because they are computational devices. They are fixing everything that you would want to hear and fix yourself. You would just think, oh, great, the track sounds fine. Ship it, not realizing that an entire you know, computer computational engine has spent nanoseconds right. making it sound fine Good for point. you. point. Never even thought so, of that. These, to me, have one very specific market, and that is people who are all in on the Apple ecosystem and are not price sensitive and want the absolute best sound they can get out of streaming services like Apple Music. It, it's, a, it's very close to me to computational photography, where you have this little terrible, by most standards, um, lens in a, in a phone, whether it's a Google phone or an Apple phone. And because they're so good at the computer part, they can make that the best that it can possibly be, way more than that lens has any right being. It is not the same as your Canon or Sony glass at all, but wow, is it great for a 
for a phone. And this to me is the same thing. It's like, it's not a high end reference set. It's not using uncompressed audio. It's not doing any of those things, but I can scarcely believe that I'm listening to Apple music or I'm watching <laughs> uh, TV plus or Netflix or Disney plus when I'm watching it, because it sounds like a full lush, rich soundscape that I'm just not used to hearing from tiny bit rate compressed audio on the over, over devices. It's, it's a very strange experience. So it's using Apple's own Bluetooth codec. It's not. Uh, it's a proprietary Bluetooth codec. Yeah, it's. It is. I don't know how long they'll stick with Bluetooth. I think Bluetooth is an implementation detail for them, and it allows compatibility. AirPlay Two Apple. would be a lot better. Yeah, except you like then you start dealing with peer-to-peer -peer Wi-Fi, and there's power issues when you get right. to devices like that are small, like the AirPods Pro, just the power draw of Wi-Fi. But when you start getting more U1 chips out there, and they can do a hybrid. Right now, for bigger devices, they do Bluetooth for discovery um, and handshaking, and then they hand off to peer-to-peer Wi-Fi to race to sleep. But you can't race to sleep with a stream; it, it's going to keep that radio on. So there's a whole bunch of technical hurdles, and maybe the U1 Ultra Band chips will fix that. But it's say it, that what's it race to better. sleep. What is say that again? What is race? So race to sleep. So there's this, this people often think that the slower the connection, the more power efficient it has to be. But they discovered a long time ago that if you can get something transferred really fast, ah. you can shut the chipset down right away. And that saves way more power than just trying to transfer the thing. Slowly. So instead of streaming a song, you really you send the whole song over. Yeah. And then you could turn yeah. off the chip for three minutes while you're listening and then send the next yeah. song. Okay. But even that with Wi-Fi, it's too, it's still too power hungry. But I think in the future we'll see, like, I know some, like, I know like Neelay Patel would just scream so loud. We'd hear him from here if Apple did their own version of proprietary Bluetooth and with good reason. And I know there's a bunch of nerds who would love it because they'd get their completely non-compressed audio in a way that Bluetooth <laughs> doesn't deliver. I hope there's a hybrid where Apple uses these three standard based technologies to let you be compatible with any one of them. But you know, if they detect you're all in on Apple, they just cut into but the high bit stream. But they're not using AppDex. They're not using the high quality Bluetooth. Not as not as far as I know, no. But it sounds and did you buy the cable? Um <laughs> did they send I, you I these is have, a loaner, right? Did they send you a cable? No, I I, I didn't no, I didn't get them. I had to buy these. You bought them. Rosemary yeah, has the cable, but she doesn't have her headphones yeah, yet. I got the so I Rosemary, you want to send him? <laughs> oh, it's a it's an O. Henry story. <laughs> oh. No, he's got both. So have no. you tried it wired? Does it sound different? No, it's it sounds the same. Like I don't think they're doing anything different. I think they're still pulling in so they're not actually playing you the music, which is the weird part. They're pulling in the music, completely deconstructing it the way you would a, photo oh. like a, a, a capture off a sensor. And then they're building their 3D soundscape based oh. on the data they get from the stream. So identifying instruments, looking at things like stereo and five point like surround and Atmos to try to figure out where things should be. And then they build what they call a spatial audio model out so of it. So the way they get the data is kind of irrelevant. It's not like they're sending... Yeah a low bit rate quality version of the song. They're sending the same version of the song. Yeah. You're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's but that's an analog cable, isn't it? It's not a or is it a data cable? It, it no, it's it, all it does is convert the 3.5 millimeter analog signal into a digital lightning signal. So it is digital. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. The other end. Yeah. The other end. Yeah. So it is getting analog into the headphones. It doesn't get a digital bit stream into the headphones. I, so I don't know. I know in the original 3.5 millimeter adapter, that had the DAC built into it, and it was supposedly a fairly good one. Uh, I don't know if these have it built in or not. They are $35, so just my wallet is going to hope that they're doing something more I than I think the DAC is in the cable. Now, but the problem with that is a $35 DAC from audio file point of view is not a very good DAC. No, so, but like to, again, to them, it's irrelevant. You can't charge 200 taking, bucks for a cable. They would really. Yeah. That, all right. So, no, I think this is not an audiophile purchase. This is a no. purchase for somebody who is a fan of Apple technologies like spatial audio and, and wants yes. that in an over the ear headphone. Yes. Rosemary, and, you're yeah. buying it. Why are you buying it? Uh, yeah. So, I'm curious. So, I currently have the Sony WHM1000. Is that what you're wearing right now? Yeah. 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 And yeah. they're good, but I'm getting a headache uh, just where this right. actually sits right here. It's uncomfortable. I've tried the Bose QC35s and I get uh, ache from the pressure points around my ears. Um, and so basically I am on an ever more expensive quest for more comfortable headphones. Don't get more expensive, <laughs> get less expensive, get these. They're $49, the AKG yeah. Pro Audio K240s. 
Uh, I can tell you from ex from 20 years, maybe 30 years of experience, these used to be 250 bucks, Right, John? Suddenly the price just pff, cratered. Didn't somebody buy them? Uh, yeah, AKG is no longer AKG. I can't remember yeah. who owns AKG. But uh, they sound well, as good as far as I'm concerned. And they do have Bluetooth. Want, yeah, what I do want, though, is that that instant handoff between devices, you know, so I'm watching a video uh, on my Mac and I pause it and I pick yeah, up my phone an and watch an Instagram technology. video. Yeah. And that's not something that I'm going to get. That's yeah. something I kind of had it with the Bose because um, it, it compared to two devices at once um, and then it'll switch between them and you can use the app to say, oh, and disconnect from my Mac and connect to my iPad, which is a bit of a faff, but you know, if you're pretty much just living on your iPhone and your iPad, it's all right. And especially if, say, you're on a plane um, and you just want to be able to, you know, watch things and listen to music and watch a video on your iPad and go back to listening to music, that works. But, um, you know, I living in pandemic land, I'm at home, I'm on my Mac as much as I'm on any other device. Right. Um, so it's, it, I'm looking for that automatic handoff. And I'll see, I'm willing to return the headphones if they don't work for me, um, but I'm very much hoping they will. Yeah. It was Samsung who bought AKG. I just double checked. Samsung. <laughs> they own they, everything. Samsung. Maybe that's why they're so cheap now. Um, yeah, they don't care. They, oh, they can't tell money. the difference because I, I had the more expensive ones and w one day they got replaced by the $49 ones and they still sell Do you use audiophile <laughs> headphones, Leo? Do you ever use those? Like the $1,000 reference monitors and studio mixing sets? Say again? Do you ever use the studio, like the audio file, or just like the studio mixing high-end monitor, thousand dollar, two thousand dollar? Yeah, I have Hi-Fi Man, thousand uh, dollar headphones with planar magnetic drivers. Those are audio file headphones. They sound marvelous. The spatial um, openness of the sound. The it's really hard to describe. It's like wine. There there yeah. are a few words, but it may not be meaningful to you. But to me, what audio file headphones do is um, there is a is an openness you could the instruments are much more distinct yeah and there's a clarity that you hear with high high fidelity headphones that you don't hear with anything less and even a $500 headphone you're not going to hear that you really need to get some very very fancy headphones but my my rationale for that is for a thousand bucks I'm getting what would cost much more in speakers exactly on my head and so I like them I don't wear them all that often but if you have a very good DAC and, a, and it sounds wonderful and so, yeah, if, headphones aren't necessarily cheap. I'm not, I'm not yeah. a cheapskate. But no, I have to I say, if you want comfort, by the way, those hi-fi men are very comfortable. You could wear them all day yeah. easily. But uh, yeah. that's a lot of money. It's just you don't need the cable and you don't need the DAC or the, or, or the uh, what is it, the amplifier. Yeah, these, you don't need any specific other these, gear. These two so headphones convenient. I'm talking about are pure analog. They don't have accelerometers. Yeah. <laughs> They don't, they don't know <laughs> which ear is on which ear. They Back don't, in your day, they didn't have accelerometers? They actually they actually have print an L and an R on the actual headphone instead of weaving oh, it into those. the cup. Yeah, no, it's woven into the cup. Oh, yeah. look, he's taking the magnetic cup off. Look at that. <laughs> That's beautiful. That actually is yeah. a nice, elegant touch. Yeah. Of course, Apple's designed beautiful things. But to me, maybe because I wear headphones every day of my working life for the last 45 years... Headphones are a, not a, um, a, a a technology object. They're a tool. They're a tool. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's that's what was concerning, or that's what was, what was on my mind about these things. About how I think a lot of the reviewers are going to review them as super high quality five hundred fifty dollar headphones. They're not. But I, I, I yeah, yeah, exactly. I wonder if the typical consumer is just someone who wants better headphones than their their ear, the ones they stick in their ears that come from Apple and they're willing to their their total satisfaction quotient index will be a factor of not only the audio quality but how they feel the features that they've got how they look and how how Apple y they are and so that's that's the sort of thing I'm really looking forward to reading in in reviews and responses yeah they're Apple y that's for Except sure. for the case. Okay, I still have no idea <laughs> yeah, how that that's, case <laughs> that's, see, it that, looks that's, like that's chap, the, it's chaps for your headphones. It's just yeah. not good. I, I just wonder, this this is something that Apple is always I, I don't think they get they get this thing right, where they uh, they should realize that for five hundred and fifty dollars, it's not enough that you've got you can tell talk about the kind of steel that you're putting into the headband. Give me a nice case. I know that's a third party opportunity, but you should I would expect to get a good case with it. I would also expect the to case get is a the case is a joke. 
I, I, I'm also expecting to get like, the cables I need with it. Right. But do you think it is a joke? You think like Johnny was on his way out and he just doodled this down as a as a laugh, like to take the piss, and then <laughs> let's he see left it. And they oh, you it can't take your headphones off. Never mind. It's like a bra. Yeah. Or, although uh, uh, Ashley Esketha said it really looked more like a permanent plumber's crack. It looks like chaps. It looks like chaps, chaps for your headphones. For your it's headphones. like they're there to keep, to keep the like ear cuts from getting scratched. Yeah. Yeah. Which is nutty. They're not. But they're smart well, because they've got magnets in. There you go. Yes. <laughs> If it had a trackpad on it, then it would be magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've decoded the Apple terminology. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Somebody I, had I'd to. Be, <laughs> I just got to say that I'd be I'd be pretty minus if after spending five hundred fifty bucks on these, the first time I take it on a trip, I'm wind up fracturing uh, one of the joins and the between the air cups because it's not band. a hard case. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, I know. And again, third party opportunity. I'm sure lots of people are going to come up with nice hard cases. But do I should I really be expected to spend an extra fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty dollars? Or can Apple? Could, is it is it be behooven on Apple to give me something practical and functional? that I will want to replace after a year from now. Uh, so I'm not going to buy any. I'm, I'm impressed that both Rosemary and uh, Renee spent their own money uh, <laughs> buying these. You guys are more dedicated than I am. It's okay. I'm sure Alex well, will show up with a pair that you can try at some point, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm really curious about the sound quality. I mean, that's all to me. That's all that matters. Comfort and sound Did Micah quality. order? I didn't see. Did, did Micah say what no, he ordered or not? No, 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 because okay. I said he couldn't have one. <laughs> but, oh, but they're the right color for him, at least. <laughs> he loved the green. Yeah. He did love Marquez the green. Marquez had the green. Yeah. In his video. Yeah. Um, it's, an, it's an interesting thing for Apple to do. I guess it makes sense in the overall Apple ecosystem. My guess is that this is going to be like HomePods, where they just they wanted to get the technology out, and this is what it cost them to get the technology out now, and then we'll have the whatever the version of the HomePod Mini is for these next year, yeah. Uh, yeah. the sport version that's two hundred and fifty bucks or something, and it'll just it'll keep S pushing speaking down. Speaking of there. Sir Johnny, I think this is this is a bogus rumor, but there is a rumor that Sir Johnny Ive or Apple CFO Luca Maestri is both of them are being considered for CEO of Ferrari. I could see Johnny. Not, What's he doing? He's not doing anything. He loves, but not Eddie Q, who's actually on the board of Ferrari. Oh, that's right. That's kind of <laughs> Maybe Eddie's putting those names up. I can't, do, it feels we, like a press release, right? Like the company says this just to get attention. Yeah. 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 I don't see. Yeah, yeah. It's especially with Johnny Ive. Like, I don't like. Where has he? had that kind of experience and also where has he had that shown that kind of interest titan i mean he's a, he's, he's a design guy okay <laughs> yeah, but, yeah but how honestly <laughs> although although if an apple guy if an apple person were the ceo maybe the electrical systems would finally be reliable and not set the cars on fire after two years i wonder how hard it is to be ceo of ferrari really is that a tough job <laughs> i think it's more ceremonial I mean, does he have to drive all the cars? And if yeah. so, at the same time, <laughs> I can or see can Johnny. he have people for that? He has people. He has people. I can I mean, see Eddie Johnny used to have that. the Le Ferrari at uh, Infinite Loop, which was always always got attention. Yeah, Eddie. I forgot Eddie's on the board at Ferrari. I completely yeah. forgot that. And Apple CarPlay. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting. By the way, for my uh, new Mustang, which will have uh, CarPlay and Android Auto, but wireless. And it has, yeah. and it's funny because this is the problem. There is a mismatch between the time it takes to design a car, deliver it. They've been working on this for three years, and the time it takes to design and deliver a new iPhone, because yes. <laughs> it has Qi charging in it. But it really should have MagSafe, but it doesn't because it was designed three yeah. years ago. But it'll be ready for the portless one because it's wireless. Yeah. So you put the phone. <laughs> there's a ch pad for two phones. Right there underneath the radio, you put it there, and it charges uh, while it's sitting there, and it's wirelessly car playing. I can't wait. I think that's going to be kind of cool. Also, my this. wireless car play solution involved buying a, a magnetic mount that slides <laughs> into the CD slot of my ten-year-old car and a MagSafe charger. Perfect. That magnetizes two set magnetic dock, and then my phone goes on the mag on the MagSafe. It actually works super well. <laughs> I bet that and a um a, a cable that is uh, not dissimilar to this wonderful cable that Apple uh allowed me to purchase from my airpods max nice. uh 
in that it's USB on one end and aux on the other, and that uh, creates a Bluetooth environment so that my phone can actually talk to my car wirelessly. Works surprisingly well, and uh, bonus, my car's 10 years old. I so. had a, a cassette with a little wire hanging out of it in my car for the longest time. That was how I connected, uh, connected everything. It actually does work very well. You know what doesn't work well, though, is the ones that use a radio, little tiny FM radio transmitter. Oh, yeah. Bad yeah. idea. Tried all yeah. of those. Those are yeah, yeah. I'm super impressed with the Bluetooth. I thought it was going to be really janky and cut out all nice. the time. The only problem is, is when you turn on the electrics of the car, uh, then the Bluetooth turns on, and then when you turn the car on, then the the electrics briefly turn off and then turn back on again. Yeah. Uh, so that means that my shortcut that I would like to uh, pop up so that I can run it as my sat nav pops up twice. Um, but you know, it's okay. Are you going to, have you played with app clips, Rosemary, and, and making an app clip uh, out of an app at all? I have not played with making it. I've been following with great interest what other people are doing. For my personal apps, There, I'm not seeing any great use case. These are things that people would download at home and, and do stuff with. But for companies who, you know, are out and about and integrate into restaurants and offer their, their ordering service, especially now, with uh, the whole pandemic and people not going to tables. I went to, out to eat earlier this year um, and uh, we ordered at the table. There was a little QR code on the table. We scanned it, it popped up the menu. Uh, we went through and we selected everything we wanted. Oh, we had to cool. tell it what table number we were at, which oh. is slightly ridiculous. They could have embedded, we had to tell them which restaurant and which table number. Uh, that could have all <laughs> been embedded in there. They, they could have skipped that for us. But, um, you know, that worked pretty well. And that was just, you know, a web app. Um, but I, I can see that working really well as an app clip and giving people a better experience because then uh, I would definitely have been able to pay with Apple Pay, which uh, their web app for some reason did not support. Um, Evil John in our chat room makes a really interesting <laughs> point. He says app clips are the beachhead for Apple glasses. We, we've, we've seen this. Apple do this before where they did it with the M1 where they were they slowly implemented all these changes that by themselves mm -hmm. seemed like little things. But then suddenly, oh, it all makes sense in the M1. Um, I think we're doing the same thing with glasses. You could say app clips because the glasses, if the, they had cameras, and I guess they'll have to, could could recognize those and automatically do something. Somebody also said spatial audio doesn't make that much sense in a pair of headphones, but it makes a lot of sense in a pair of glasses with headphones built into them. <laughs> I think LIDAR. we're <laughs> and lidar, same thing, right? What's who cares about lidar on your iPad or iPhone, I mean, it's kind of a gimmicky thing. but And I guess you could use it for camera focus. That's nice. But it makes a lot of sense in a glasses in an augmented reality world. So maybe that's what the, this is all about. There's also another thing, Rosemary, that um, I didn't think of, but Micah pointed out on iOS today. It doesn't just have to be for, you know, out and about parking or restaurant. It Some, some developers are going to start using them to, in effect, put a small demo of their app on your phone. Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting. So that would be uh, like there is no way to do demos in the App Store right now. But if you could have a demo with app clips that was sufficiently functional that people could say, oh, I like this. And it disappears after a day, right? It doesn't stick around on your phone. But if they said, oh, I like this, this might be an interesting use case for it. This suddenly yeah, became available yesterday. Quite yeah. Nicely. yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that working quite nicely. Obviously, it depends very much on on what it is the app actually does. Because yes. you know, if you've already got a very minimal app, I'm just going to use Dice uh, by James Thompson here as an example. <laughs> it, there, there is no point to having an app. But you know, demo James will that do app. that. He's going to have oh, a screen tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> if there's an yeah, Apple technology, it, he's on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's going to do it, but there, there wouldn't necessarily be a use case for that. Because what, am I only going to be able to roll D6 <laughs> right. or something? Right. Um, and yes. then I want to roll go. a D20. Well, download the full app. Um, mm. you know. uh, <laughs> emergency savings throw clip. So Apple added this capability with 14.3. Uh, there is an app clip code generator command line tool and an app clip tool that allow you to, you could choose your foreground and background color. There's three different colors in the app clip. A third color that the command line tool generates for you based on the other two colors. Um, I do like how they look. I think that, you know, they don't look like boring old square QR codes. They're round. Yeah. 
Well, that's, that's to make sure that it's branded with the uh, with right. uh, with Apple. Exactly. The, the, I mean, it's it's a really really powerful idea because this is the sort of thing that extends Apple's presence way beyond any sort of software platform. Where you enter the Metropolitan Museum of Art and you see an app clip tag saying, "Oh, by the way, if you want to get a walking tour, if you want to get a map, here is just just uh, aim your iPhone at this at this thing, and congratulations, you suddenly have uh, a a location aware map that you're using to." navigate this space uh same thing for shopping same thing for parking passes same thing for all these sort of things it does it's yes it could have really nice applications for uh, for future wearables but just the simple fact of here is something that could be printed by a printer by by a sign maker by anything placed in place somewhere and be have the ability to place a useful piece of software on an iphone that is not available to everyone who's running a samsung phone that's a pretty big win for apple they uh, so if you got fourteen three um, and you see an app clip QR code, try it um, and see what <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> and tell us how it works. Tell us out. how it works out because I'm not going anywhere, <laughs> and I don't believe I have any QR codes around the house at this point. This has been around forever. Remember there was there were NFC tags we had in the old studio. We had like little on the on the pillars. Little NFC tags yeah. you could tap yep. and things like that. Well, those are those are great too, and the app clip does work with NFC. So imagine the ability right. to, like, a, on a smart speaker, uh, the ability to here's the software that you need, or here's the here's the configuration that you need. Just tap it onto this device. It would be lovely if uh, we were just talking about how uh, great uh, Apple hardware and software works together as part of an ecosystem. But it would be great if JBL, who wanted to make their uh, their speakers as attractive to any every as of, to as many people as they want, to add this sort of functionality where no it's not going to be as discoverable as a pair of airpods but if you just tap your iphone against this uh, against the top of this thing it will all the configuration and all the software that you need will automatically be put onto your phone without any uh, any further setup so look it, it is a, just a really really uh, nice nice way to extend the iphone into the real world beyond things that uh, just have an apple logo on them Although my point was going to be, these things have been around forever and nobody uses yeah. them. So well, but yeah, but the, the, the different this, this is something that I'm always fascinated by. That only only Apple has the ability to really, through kind persuasion and the steel boot hill on the, on the neck of the developer, say that we are strongly suggesting that you support this technology in the future. Not only by making you making your app look stupid if it doesn't support it, but also by promising that no, this is not just something that we had some intern throw up and we decided to. We had some space left in the last keynote, so we decided to actually roll it out as part of the next hardware update. When they actually commit to something, they commit to something. Even they, for heaven's sake, they have the they they're still selling the HomePod. Like even though like yeah. it was like, eh, okay, it's nice, but we don't want it. We want these other stuff. But they didn't just they didn't give it just like one re run year and then discontinue it. This is the commitment that they have. This is why investing in an Apple technology as a developer usually is at least a neutral sort of thing. You, you're not going to get burned by it in the future. Uh, let's see what else. I want to make sure we get all the most. There's so much happened this week. Um, uh, Pro Raw. Oh, I knew it. Update. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Elite update. Yeah. 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 So Pro Raw is now also in the camera. Uh, this is something Halide 2 did their version of, but now it's official. This is... Yeah. A DNG, which is Adobe's standard for RAW, a DNG file coupled with computational data for Deep Fusion and HDR and various other things that the iPhone generates. So, in effect, if you shoot in Pro RAW, and I'll show you in a second how you can get it, if you shoot in Pro RAW, you will be shooting a RAW image, but you'll get a much larger file that has the RAW image plus computational data. A raw image on a 12 megapixel camera uh, like this would be roughly 12 megabytes. This is 25 megabytes, so that's maybe the only negative on turning this on. You don't turn the digital on, negative is a negative. <laughs> it's big. Yeah, there's a little negative. Uh, that's what DNG stands for. Yeah, this the, you turn it on not in the camera app but in the settings for the camera app, and it's in the um, it's in the uh, formats up at the top there. You'll see high efficiency, most compatible, and then there's a new switch for Apple Pro Raw, a 12-bit file that uses the linear DNG format to retain more information and dynamic range in the file. 
And then you had me a 12 bits, Leo. 12 bits. I don't know. Is that good? Is it more? It's more than eight bits. It's more than 10. Yeah, more than eight bits, more than 10 bits. And they have a pretty good uh, dynamic range as well, which is nice. Nice. And then uh, now that you've turned it on, on your camera, there'll be a right next to the live photo button, there'll be a raw button and you could turn that on. I notice it doesn't stay on. So that's a little annoying. You have to turn that on each time you use it. But that makes sense. They don't want people to fill up their storage. Although that's the reason I got a 200. No, I guess I got a 512. I got the biggest iPhone yeah. I could get because of that and because of and Dolby, uh, Dolby Vision. Vision. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I figured I I'm going to be filling this memory up pretty quick. So uh, nice. That's that's now available. Um, the Halide I2, I guess, will be updated to use that specifically instead of their own They version. have a terrific write-up. Uh, ben Sanofsky, I'm sure, with a lot of help from Rebecca and, uh, and Seb, uh, yeah. have a, an amazing in-depth. Austin Mann also posted his... Uh, his his experience with it, and it's just like it, it isn't it it isn't like some people are thinking oh it's like a like I take a raw frame off my Hasselblad it's it's like it's still an iPhone camera <laughs> but it lets you it lets you get to that data and lets you step through the computational process to tweak things the way you like them so instead of the very very good but very opinionated camera team at Apple's version of what that photo should look right. like. You have all the benefits of all the computational stuff, but you get to put your opinion on it, which a lot of creative people would really like to do. Right. Yeah. Just having access to that depth information is a huge, huge win. The the amount of time that uh, that a lot of people those those of us who like to tweak photos not necessarily spend an hour photoshopping something, but just I just wish that there was more focus on the subject in the foreground, and I wish that the background was more blue the ability to do that without having to create a, a mask on your phone but just simply say you, you know what the background is make the background more blue don't bother with me but this is what i pay you for uh, that's just that is going to be just huge 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 yeah i realized well, that uh, it's funny uh, you'd think i'd have thought of this sooner <laughs> but i realized <laughs> that with this camera i took uh, this picture um with a uh, leica and, uh, you know, it's, it's fire lit. Uh, I didn't want it yeah. to be blown out. I didn't want it to be bright. I wanted just the reflection of the fire in people's faces, that kind of thing. It's out of the fire pit in our backyard. Uh, and when I took the same picture with the iPhone, it thought I wanted to see all the details. Yeah. So it exposed everything, you know, uh, yeah. using all of its trickery. And I got a picture that is not very good. And what I realized is the, the great thing about the iPhone is it generally is just going to get a great picture because it's going to do all the computational stuff and it's going to be generally what you want. But the reason people like you, Andy, and the reason I carry fancier cameras around is we want more control. We want to be able to change the exposure dial. We want to, we want yeah. creative control. And you, and uh, until now, you really didn't get that with a smartphone. You yeah. got their idea of a best picture. You got the memory. It was meant to just help you capture a memory, not exactly. make an artistic statement. Yeah. 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 So I think this is going to be. Uh, I think I would still pull out the Leica to take this picture. Yeah. But I, yeah. but I think it's yeah. it's going to be good. It's going to be better. You're, you're absolutely right. I think this is this is why I think that a lot of the uh, it used to be like five years ago. It was kind of important for me to go to the Boston Public Library with five different phones and take the same shot over and over again with each of the phones, and we can both pick peep which one does a different which one is different today i just don't think that's as useful that's very useful because uh, i think that ev almost every phone every uh, phone camera is as good as every other phone camera let's say they arbitrarily say that four hundred dollars or more uh they, there are differences when you just take the picture and post it without doing anything with it but take the picture and then spend i'm saying 10 seconds pushing a few sliders around in the stock photos app to make it look exactly mm -hmm. like you want it to look then you get to well there's no difference between one or the other usually when you get to when you people do these side by side by side by side comparisons people are reacting to oh i think that the sky is a little bit more blue in this one or i think that there's more detail in the leaves in this one and that, but it's not consistent from camera to camera to camera all you have to do is just whether even inside instagram decide that i wish that were a little bit warmer boom two seconds later it's a little bit warmer so this is this is why these sort of developments are a lot more exciting uh is especially if uh, camera companies or phone companies decide that we want to make these editing these little quick five second edits uh more front and center as as more of an implication as part of the photo taking process although the 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 end result will always be i'm just here to take a 
like as Renee said, memories. I want to take a snapshot. I want to do. I want as much power behind that one tap of one button as possible. Uh, but it's uh, the the idea of having Pro uh, have, having a more in depth RAW and being able to not even know that you're taking this this heavy RAW image and that's got depth data and it's got lidar data, but simply the fact that for some reason I can now make the I can now make the faces pop a little bit more without affecting affecting the background. That's what people want, and that's the sort of stuff that Apple iPhones are always great at. Renee, you had a good interview with Austin, Austin Mann, by the way. Uh, oh, thank it, you so watch much. Watch that on his. And here's an example picture from Austin. This is a night shot on the. These are the same device, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but on the left, the HEIC version. Both of these imported into Lightroom. On the right, the Pro Raw, and you can see how much more detail, how much cl yeah. more clarity, because the HEIC really smushes the stars. Um, yeah. You know, they just and so it really having all the data from the sensor plus the computational stuff is going to be very interesting. Well, it's like all those uh, photos, uh, photos taken during the fire when it automatically corrected the yellow skies to blue and everyone on Twitter was complaining exactly. they couldn't get a yellow. Exactly. But I was watching Marquez's. He does a smartphone shootout every year where he takes every smartphone, takes a bunch of pictures and posts them on Instagram and Twitter and people vote on them. And every year, like the iPhone and Pixel get knocked out in the first round, like without fail. <laughs> they get completely annihilated. Like all the expensive cameras go down. I think the first year, the Poco phone won. Um, this is why I, I put no stock or credence at all in that shootout. But he's found a pattern, which, which is interesting. He said, like, almost always the brighter photo will win. It exactly. doesn't matter about anything else, but if it's brighter. Exactly. And because Twitter will really boost the sat and Instagram a little bit, the photo that's less blue and more yellow will win. Yeah. And if you take those two things, the brightest <laughs> yep. yellow photo will just win the contest because we're all looking at them on our phones. Yeah. Actually, it was a 9 to 5 Mac. Somebody uh, did a head-to-head -head with this, the top-of-the-line Samsung iPhone and uh, Pixel. And... Uh, I was surprised at actually some of the decisions the iPhone made were terrible in terms yeah. of color and so forth. I thought the Pixel 5 easily, easily beat uh, the iPhone. But I think it depends Pixel what you're taking a picture of. Exactly. And the thing, like the, the thing it feels like the Pixel will, sort of like what Apple started doing in some ways, it will take everything down to the barest to atoms and then give you the best Google picture. Like it's a little bit, it's crispy, it's contrasty, and it's cool. And no matter what you do, it'll always be that. Where the iPhone sometimes is genius and sometimes disappoints you and it's just really quirky. Yeah. <laughs> I think it comes down to, you know, uh, what kinds of pictures you're taking. The point really is that the top of the line phones these days all take very good pictures. Yeah. I just think if you want creative control, that's why people still use real cameras. And it's because for a long time I've wondered why doesn't why doesn't Nikon, Sony, and uh, Canon why don't they put more computational capabilities into these five and six thousand dollar cameras? And I guess that's the reason, is that that's not what yeah. a pro wants. They don't want the computation. Oh, but also the the sensor size is too big. I was talking to some of the people, I talked to the Google team and the Apple team about this, and the sensor, those sensors are just too big to do the kind too of much bracketing. Data. And yeah, it's yeah, too, it is much, too much, data. much data. I mean, they'll get there, yeah. but right now it's it, to do the kind of stacking that they're doing instantly, that, yeah. that's why I think Google and Apple are still at 12 megapixel cameras and they haven't gotten as big as some right. of the other people have. Yeah, if Canon had an M1 chip in there, maybe, possibly. Yeah. Even yeah. then, like that's when you get to those set, those sensor sizes are so big compared to what Apple and Google yeah. are using. Oh yeah, my Sony, uh, my new Sony is I think sixty one megapixels. It's, yeah, it's yeah. nuts. I mean, that's just nuts. <laughs> And, and also, it's, it, you ask the average user what constitutes a good camera. Yes, they want a good picture, but the one of the things that Apple got on board with really, really quickly is that you press the button, and even it, it's not even instant when that that picture gets taken, and there's no pause after the picture gets taken yeah. before you can take the next one. That's what they want. They want to make sure that whatever I'm, whatever, it, whatever I'm, I'm, I'm aiming this damn thing at it will get a picture of that thing if i just pr if i just press this picture without accidentally switching camera modes by, by accidentally swiping the bottom of the screen uh, and that's not something that other cameras particularly android cameras were any good at uh, and now there's even even now there's some uh, a lot of cameras have caught up with it but apple is still the, the the king at you will believe believe you me if you if you will if you suddenly if you suddenly catch your little kid doing something adorable and you're you're you got rattlesnake reflexes your camera will not let you down you will get a picture of that adorability 
at uh, Halloween, I took a picture of Georgia with both the Pixel 4 and the iPhone. I think it was the iPhone 11 in night mode. And I hit them both at the exact same time. And then her brother came and put his arm around her. And because they really prioritize zero shutter lag at on the yeah. iPhone, it's a picture of Georgia. <laughs> the Pixel picture is a picture of Georgia and her brother. This yeah. is, uh, by the way, this is, uh, I gave, uh, att attributed it to the wrong site. This is a Mac Rumors article, camera comparison, iPhone 12 Pro Max versus Google Pixel 5 versus Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And, I mean, even just like if you look at uh, this, the Pixel clearly got the sky right, and the iPhone, for some reason, just decided, that's yeah. blue. I don't care. That's blue. It really overblues us here. Yeah. Uh, I've never liked what Samsung does, does uh, but uh, look at how blue the cast is on the uh, 12 Pro Max. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could fix that, obviously. Uh, Austin Mann recommends, and I am not familiar with his third one, but recommends three tools for the Pro Raw workflow. Halide, of course. So it understands Pro Raw now, right? They, yeah. they updated it so that they were using their own version. Now they're going to support that. Lightroom, which I'm just not going to use. I'm sorry. I'm mad yes. at Adobe. I just pissed off. And this third one, Raw Power, which I'm not familiar with. Are you familiar yeah. with that? Anybody is? Uh, I had he never mentioned heard of this. It, from Gentleman Coders. Yeah. I'm going to have yeah. to. He says, if you liked Aperture, you'll like it. It works with photos, which is nice. And it's iOS and Mac. So I will, uh, I will try that and let you get back to you, let you know. Uh, it, it would be, be and nice I think Pixelmator updated to support it too. Did it? Oh, good. Pixelmator Photo so. yeah, or it did. Pixelmator Pro? Photo on the on the uh, iOS? I think it's Pro. I'm not okay. sure about Photo. Okay. Yeah, I would get, I, I, I have to ask uh, Naomi because she's repping them now. I have to ask her is, is, is Photo, everything in Photo encapsulated into Pro? So if I use Pro on the Mac because there's no Photo on the Mac, I'm getting all of those features? Or, is, or are there really two different products? Last I checked, I believe everything is in there, but Naomi will definitely know for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it, it feels to me like Pro is just everything. Yeah, and that's why they didn't bother yeah. putting out a photo version on, on the Macintosh. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, let's take a little break. We have lots more with our esteemed panel. It's so nice to see you, Rosemary. Um, we we want more of Rosemary. I can tell yes. you that right now. Countersigned. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's All always very fun being here. Yeah. <laughs> just, just say some of you may get your wish. That's all I can say. Ooh. I don't. I don't want to say anything prematurely. No spoilers, of course. No, no spoilers. No, no Baby Yoda spoilers. No, no Rosemary spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. Our show that day, AirPods Max spoilers are totally allowed. They're they're, yes. they're spoiled already right. for me. Yeah. It's free. Uh, <laughs> our show today brought to you by Forward Networks. Your network, I think you know by now, is mission critical to your business. Forward Networks is brilliant. I talked to these guys. They're four Stanford PhD students. They were actually graduate students when they developed Forward Networks seven years ago at Stanford. <laughs> Partly because they had they had real feelings for how what a rough life network operators had. <laughs> and they <laughs> thought, what if we applied the principles of modern software development to the network? What they actually have created is a mathematical model of your network, a digital twin, completely accurate and up-to-date. They do all sorts of interesting things to make sure that even if something new is put on the network, it's immediately incorporated into the model. It becomes your single source of truth. And I know you would think that that's something everybody has, but most companies don't. In fact, Forward Network's uh, got to know the folks uh, at Goldman Sachs. They applied it. Suddenly, they see everything going on. They liked it so much, they led their Series C founding run in October. Uh, so did Mark Andreessen at Andreessen Horowitz. He was blown away by it. This is a new tool that you absolutely have to have. You can verify that your network is correctly configured that it's compliant with policies and regulations, that it's behaving as you thought it was or not, and why it's not. You can accurately predict the impact of a proposed change across every network traffic path. In fact, there's this behaviors diff that I think is so cool. If you, you know, you're a coder, you know a diff is uh, often used with text files to compare side by side two different text files. These diffs are for network behavior, side by side comparison in one quick view of whatever configuration file changes you're looking at. You know, 
How often does BGP and misconfigured BGP route all the traffic <laughs> in the whole? Didn't Cloudflare have this problem a while ago where everything was routed through main by accident? And it can really destroy <laughs> not only your network, but all your, all your buddies' networks. Imagine if you could say, well, we're thinking of this BGP route and see side by side what that's going to do before you do it. Before you do it, you could search network behavior configuration and state network wide. It's a uh, go to the website forwardnetworks.com slash twit and see a demo of what you see. It is incredible. This is a mathematically correct model of your network. Exactly. Their dashboard gives you insights with visualizations that you can easily consume and export. It can automatically create an always accurate network diagram. Can you imagine that? Just imagine that always accurate network diagram with full details about the complete topology of your network. You can, you can set, check, and customize policies for your entire network. Make sure that your network's always compliant. Proactively identify connectivity and security policy violations. You're going to get, like, on average, 50% faster resolution of network trouble tickets, 90% faster fixes related to audit processes, 33% reduction in aborted network updates due to identified errors. This is what you've been looking for, PayPal was having issues with their network. They considered building a better system. Instead, they turned to forward networks. They found all they needed was software that could find the trouble spots that saved them time and money. Bank of America, Verizon, Telstra. This, th these are companies that use this to keep an eye on their massive, complex networks so that they always know how it's operating. If Verizon uses forward networks, you know it must get the job done. Get network automation and verification for your intent-based network with forward networks. Your business absolutely depends on it. And you've got to see the demo. Forwardnetworks.com slash twit. Forwardnetworks, plural, dot com slash twit. They've got a new podcast. It's got a perfect name for this. Seeking Truth in Networking. <laughs> Search for that. Listen to that. These are some of the smartest network guys I've ever talked to. I was so blown away forwardnetworks.com slash twit. If you've got a complex network, you've got to manage it. I think about the folks at uh, JPL. Was it JPL? Where somebody brought in a Raspberry Pi, attached it to the network, and caused havoc. If you had forward <laughs> networks, you'd immediately say, well, that's new. What's that? Why is that, why is that broadcasting packets all over the network? forwardnetworks.com slash twit. We thank them so much for their support of Mac Break Weekly. You support us, too, by going to that address so that they know you saw it here. Forwardnetworks.com slash twit. Uh, Apple says most staff will not return to office until June. That seems like a reasonable time frame. The vaccines, did you get your vaccine yet, Rosemary? Uh, no, no, they are rolling them out to uh, considerably more vulnerable persons than myself over here. Oh. So uh, I'll I'll let the people that really need it go first. <sighs> I thought you were an essential worker. You should get it. <laughs> yes, but I also have the wonderful ability to completely and utterly stay in a very, very, very tiny bubble, a.k.a. my own house. Yeah, you're safe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Tim Cook said, likely majority of teams won't be back before June 2021. Yeah, and Google just postponed again, didn't they? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, know. I've, we don't have. We don't I, even. I'm not going to even say a time. No. I mean, I think that I, there's no reason that we don't need to, but I, I, it's not going to be till it's over. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever that is, and yeah. that's still I'm hearing, even though there's a vaccine. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, I was going to say I'm just hearing from a lot of people that they've been told that they're not traveling next year, that everything's just going to yeah. be online, oh, um, yeah. and. You know, they're probably not going to be back in the office super regularly. I know my mom, uh, she's been told that they will never be back in the office permanently. They'll be back in a few days a week. Um, but the vast majority of the time, they're going to be at home. Um, wow. So I, I can uh. imagine that uh, a lot of companies are probably going to do something similar, especially if they've taken a financial hit, because one of the biggest costs out there is office space. Yeah. 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 yeah, if we didn't have but, a lease through 2026, <laughs> I'd be, Leo's garage I'd be doing this out of the house. You bet. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, my my worry is that this is going to. Go ahead, Renee. It, it, go ahead. 
Uh, yeah, I was just going to say we also now have to count on the people actually getting the vaccine, and these are people that we couldn't count. Or not not everybody, but a large portion of these people were in this situation because a large part of people couldn't even be counted on to wear a mask and keep their distance. I know. And we're already seeing the conspiracy theories. Uh, what do you what do you mean the government is getting this? That must be code. They must not really mean vaccine because we have, know they're all anti-vaccine. I have. So I'm I have, more optimistic. Uh, I have high hopes now. Now that it's here and they're going to see people getting it, and it's not nobody's going to get sick or die. Uh, there were a couple of allergic reactions in Britain, but uh, I think those are just anaphylactic, and they were treatable, and they were fine. I think I think it's. Gonna, I'm going to get it. I just going to wait for. I I just don't know how long it's going to take before we have enough people vaccinated. Well, that's right, and that's why Tim Cook's saying June. Yeah, if that, yeah. Apparently, Tim Cook is also saying you are not making a show about Gawker. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Alex's response to this? No. Yeah, Alex was all over this. He's like, I worked in this industry for 10 years. This is the this is one of the smallest, least controversial stories I have ever seen. You should actually go spend some time in network TV and see all the decisions they Lots make every day. Lots of stuff gets killed. The show uh, yeah. was being developed for Apple TV. It wasn't very far along. It was going to be called Scraper, but it was about Gawker Media. And we know that because it, the idea was sold to Apple TV by two veterans of Gawker, Cord Jefferson, and uh, Max Reed, Gawker's former editor-in-chief. And Apple hired two more former Gawker editors, this is according to Ben Smith in the New York Times, uh, as writers. They had written several episodes. I don't think they had even begun principal shooting. And then Apple, an Apple executive got an email from the company's chief executive, Tim Cook. Mr. Cook, according to two people briefed on the email, was surprised to learn <laughs> his company was making a show about Gawker. Uh I certainly no love lost on my part for Gawker. Uh, and you may remember uh, Gawker outed Tim Cook in 2008 yeah. uh, as I'm gay. Yep. And uh, so I don't I don't blame him. In fact, anybody who's ever had an, a Gawker point its uh, telescope at them is probably not a fan. Uh, in the email, he expressed a distinctly negative view toward Gawker. The people said Apple proceeded to kill the project. Probably doesn't take much. Tim is so measured and even keeled that if if he just said, but he doesn't have to make it. <laughs> I'm not really thrilled about this. That's probably all it took, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm more I'm more bothered by other other stuff mentioned in the article. Uh, it's very very true that yeah any any person who's trying to create and doesn't have the $8.5 million per episode to foot up themselves and have to get, rely on some another company to pay for it is going to deal with interference. But the, the, so the stuff that bothers me is like universally, you're not going to get any sort of, of content that in any way could even be misinterpreted as criticizing China because yeah. that's just the, the that's just the third rail uh, or even just something as simple as. But wait a minute, you can't have I understand that you have someone who uh, failed to pick up their kid at, uh, at at soccer practice because they wanted to go see a movie and they're using an iPhone. We don't want iPhone users to be portrayed in that kind of a negative light. Uh, we don't want our iPhones to be destroyed. We don't want iPhones to be dropped and mishandled. And that's the sort of stuff that's like, oh, for heaven's sakes, couldn't you do better than this? It's not, it's just not, it's not a, I don't think, like I said, it's not the a unique thing to Apple, but it is still not a good look for any company that does this sort of thing. Least of which one that says, oh, we're all about creativity and we're all about the human spirit and stuff like that. Again, as long as the human spirit is not concerned about, <laughs> does, doesn't want to, doesn't want to uh, do a movie about, uh, about the Dalai Lama or even air <laughs> the, the the, the Dalai Lama movie that uh, Martin Scorsese made. I have to say a show about Gawker would be fascinating. <laughs> I, I would be, be very interested yeah. in it because they were, you know, they they both did some very, very good things and very, very sleazy things, yeah. uh, like outing Tim Cook. Uh, so it would be a fascinating show. But there, you know what? Apple probably had points at which they could pass, passed at that point. The the creators are now shopping it around. It'll somebody else will produce it for sure. There'll be a Snyder cut. But I agree with you. Yeah, there'll be a Zack Snyder version. I agree with you, uh, um, Andy. I'm more concerned about this quote uh, from a creative figure who worked with Apple, telling the New York Times that Eddie Q said the two things we will never do are hardcore nudity and China. So, <laughs> yeah. but that's not again not much of a surprise. You know, it's funny. Um, we were actually talking a little bit about this on iOS Today. Micah Sargent and I were talking about the Apple One package. And 
Apple Music compared to, say, Spotify and Apple TV compared to HBO, say, um, it, it came to me that Apple Arcade, for instance, compared to other games, that all of the products Apple creates kind of have the edges sanded off. They're, they're, uh, they're not edgy at all. They're very palatable. And I mean, the, the TV but as show result, C was really edgy. I mean, I, I, it, was, it was almost too much for me. Oh, was it? Okay. See, I didn't see C because yeah. it didn't look that interesting. But <laughs> it was like, yeah, I feel like a lot. I feel like Apple, the thing that people said about HBO in its heyday was they give creatives free reign. They give them the money they need and they say, go do it. And, you know, no notes. And I feel like Apple gives maybe too many notes and has too many, too many, there's too much at stake for Apple as a corporation for them to really be a place where creatives can flourish. They'd never make Game of Thrones. I think that's... They would never make Game of Thrones. Of it. Yeah. And yeah. as a like, result, I feel like that hurts the products in the long run. That's why it's better for a, a, a creative company not to be owned by a big corporation. That it's it hurts them a little bit because they have to kind of, they have to consider, well, we don't want to get piss off China, that kind of thing. And the we're going to see more and more of that like, because does? more and more media companies are owned by AT and T yeah. and Comcast and Apple. So this is and not China unusual. now too. Like they're yeah. huge investors. In, like in a lot of the movies now, they have huge investments from a lot of the Chinese companies. And I, I think even that article they said Disney has the same policies. Disney's probably even more yeah. strident about content that they'll they'll kick stuff to Hulu if Lizzie McGuire. Uh, says a curse word at this point right. and there's no comp yeah. but the, I think the problem is that if you have one or two companies that's fine because the competition will be between those companies the ones that will but increasingly everyone is not doing that like there's no I don't I can't think of a single media company that would make a show that China doesn't like at this point the NBA got in trouble for comments from players that they didn't like so it's <laughs> it's yeah it's gonna be tough going forward I I know that Disney is fairly strict on, you know, what actors can and can't do and what they can or can't have done before they appear in a Disney show. So uh, Anne Hathaway was uh, can't appear, uh, I think, in sort of Disney princess movies anymore because she did Brokeback Mountain and things like that. But I find it very that's uh, shameful, by the way, if that's the case, that's yeah. shameful. Well, I mean, that was the story going around back then. I don't remember the details and I have no idea if it's actually true. But, you know, the point is, is they have certain standards. But Disney also own a whole ton of other companies. So, you know, as, well, as Renee they said, created, they, can, they, yeah. Yeah, they can kick it over to something yeah. else. Whereas Apple is purely the Apple brand. They don't have a whole bunch of other brands um, where right. they're, you know, shop, farming Beats. this stuff out to. So. <laughs> right. Well, and, yeah, and they show that on Beats TV. <laughs> yeah, and bet it. Uh, and, yeah, and and to be fair, if Apple chooses to make its branding that we are family, fr we are PG thirteen, we will dip a toe into R if if it's an important enough uh, creator or an important enough property. But we are we don't want anything to do with. Anything that could get people not wanting to let the, let the, their iPhone. children use their iPhones. <laughs> I mean, that's it's it's just that you just wish that uh, you, you, this this was an opportunity for Apple to plant its flag in a different way. Uh, it's too bad that they didn't decide to go that extra mile. What I, what the, I mean, I, I mentioned uh, Kundun because this is this is what happens when like Disney buys uh, buys Fox Studios and these other studios. Now Martin Scorsese's movie about the Dalai Lama is probably unless it winds up on. I don't think it'll even wind up on Hulu. It's such, it would be such a hot potato for Disney, this huge international brand, to allow this movie to be aired on their streaming service that it's probably going to just disappear. And that's that's a very, very sad thing. I agree 100 percent. That's why these big companies should not be allowed to own content creation. It's really yeah. sad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're, they're never going to get the best. Yeah, the EU is actually saying as well that they will uh, try and shut down Apple TV Plus over here unless they have a certain percentage of EU content because that is their requirement yeah. for uh, um, people. Another we have that in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how Canadian do you give 30, content. Like, we want 30% yeah. Canadian. You know that, Leo, from you being here. And then 30% UK content, 30% yeah. EU content. There's not enough percent. Right. Excuse me. If, yeah. if not for that, if not for that rule, we would not have Bob and Doug McKenzie. I'm willing to back that rule with all my might. As I don't know. SC, wait a minute. SCTV was a Canadian production. I think they were all Canadian, yes. so no, they no, didn't no, really they, need 
Doug and no, Bob. They, 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 <laughs> they did. They actually. But, but it's uh, uh, the the story is that they were actually being dinged by the government, saying that you need to have Canadian more Canadian uh, content. And Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas was joking. What do you want us to do? Is like have two hosers and toques and toques and drinking beers and frying back bacon? And they said that would do nicely. And so for two, it, only for the Canadian broadcasts, uh, the they would just get a minimal crew and do a half hour of just totally improvisation of these two characters, put it in the very, very end and call it Canadian content. It was Canadian content. It was all produced in Canada, wasn't it? Yeah. I think Vancouver that's a, that's a good content. sounding story, yeah. but I'm not sure I buy it. <laughs> the entire Arrowverse yeah. is Canadian content. <laughs> I mean, yeah. call for yeah. help. When we did call for help in Toronto, it just had to be, I was the only American involved with the production. We didn't have to specifically yeah. talk about uh, YouTube Canada or something. I don't think well, were, well, they well see, the thing that. is, they, when, when they saw your last name, Laporte, they just assumed you they were figured. French. They figured. Yeah. Yes. French Canadian from Montreal, yeah. of course. Yeah. 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 Actually, the e thank you, EU, because uh, while our regulatory in environment here in the U.S. seems to be up and down, although the FTC, capricious. as I mentioned, <laughs> capricious, as I mentioned, the FTC has just uh, reached out to ten tech companies, including Amazon and Facebook, saying, "Let me, can we, can we know a little bit more about your what you do with your with this data?" Ironically, it's not a it, it's not an investigation; it's a study. <laughs> So it has no yeah. it has no legal to teeth to it, but it's a study, I guess. Meanwhile, the EU has announced sweeping new rules that could force breakups and hefty fines for big tech companies. This is from CNBC. Companies like Apple and Google will also have to allow users to uninstall apps that originally came with their device, failure to comply, penalties as high as 10% of the annual revenue, worldwide revenue. That's a good penalty. I just wish I wish that the you could combine into like the EU has got such a blunt weapon, but I just wish that they could be sharp. Like, well, first, I, I loved all those articles that that showed Mark Zuckerberg just so upset that he got called in front of the FTC after he did everything he could do to just hand over the reins to the conspiracy theorists. If I just let the top 10 articles on Facebook every day be complete, utter nonsense, they'll leave me alone. And no, they didn't. So I think some, sometimes those those. Uh, uh, sometimes you get what what you have coming to you, yeah. but the EU is they're really good at enforcement, but they just seem not really to understand the technology behind it. Like some of the things they want are unfeasible. Like you get to the point where like you have to be allowed to you have to be able to disinstall all the apps, including the app store, and then at that point, like how do you get them, them back? Then what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was the same yeah. thing. Like I'm still I'm still sad. I have the, the right to ballot. disable my phone if I want to. <laughs> you, like we they they said there was not enough competition for for browsers, and so now we have Chrome. I mean that's basically all they did was give hand the world over to Chrome. I don't have Fenris or, or Slate near anymore and we only have one rendering engine now we used to have four before they got involved right yeah regulation yeah. is always um, a double-edged sword but at the same time i i feel like that's the last thing left to, that we can do about these companies that are becoming completely dominant the yes. uh, proposed eu legislation is the digital markets act uh, and then the digital services act dma would affect apple DSA would affect Google, Facebook, and others. And, of course, Mark Zuckerberg immediately <laughs> took the opportunity to say, we hope, we hope the DMA will also set boundaries for Apple. <laughs> Apple controls an entire ecosystem for... Look, pay no attention to us. Look over there. It controls an entire ecosystem from device to app store and apps and uses its power to harm developers and consumers as well as large platforms like Facebook. Mm -hmm. And in Montreal, the big story was that Pornhub got got hit really hard. They got they even got their credit card merchants took taken right. away. And their response is, "Why are you bugging us? FaceTime has a hundred times more objectionable content than we do." <laughs> FaceTime or Facebook? Facebook, sorry, Facebook has a uh, yeah, hundred times more objectionable <laughs> yeah. content than we do. Yeah, everybody's shooting at everybody else. Uh, let's hope the regulators have some sense and and don't listen to that. And uh, yeah, but, but still, we need, they need to regulators need to have the ability to really hit them with the with the ugly stick when they have to. One of the yeah. pro, one of the reasons why Facebook is getting hit so hard by the United States right now is that they uh, the regulatory agencies have taken the usual tack, which is the only uh, the only practical tack they can take, which is we have this ability to have this ruling against you. We would rather negotiate a settlement to avoid you using your trillion dollars to keep this in litigation for five, six, seven, or eight, nine years. We want an effect and improvement for the users and uh, Facebook 
uh, has been violating uh, two different uh, consent decrees they they agreed to and it's sad that they have to bl they have to screw up three times in succession before there is any, even an hi a hint that they'll uh, they'll actually uh, be made to feel the pain uh, we we need to have the ability to the gov uh, the government that's regulating these industries has to have the ability to hurt them beyond the ability for them to fight back with money because we for yes. 20 years now uh, we've been trying nothing and it hasn't worked out so we should try something now It could be it could be a horrible mess, or it could yep be great. Well, we in many ways we we can hopefully the horrible mess will wind up with will be less intense than the horrible mess we're in right now. Yeah, maybe. Unfortunately, yeah, this could be the chemotherapy of uh, of yeah. regulation. Yeah, well, that's a good way to put it. We'll lose our hair, but at least we'll survive. It killed me. Kill kill the kill the bad stuff faster than it will kill the good stuff, and yeah. then you stop before you go too far. Yeah. Um, can you make a Siri, anybody got Siri around? Can you make it quack like a duck? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I can. <laughs> you want to make a real noise? Can to say it, you can ask it to what an elephant sounds like. Wait, wait, so. So let me, we, can let me, make, we can make whale noises to save the world from Star Trek Four. Wow. So these are animal sounds now. Let me see if we can, uh, here, let me, let me, uh, let me, how, how, how do I ask for it? I just go. What does an elephant sound like? Now just put a picture up. I don't no. know if it's out or not yet. There was an announcement, but I don't know if it's out or not. And then I have to not. press a play button. I have four. I have a four lame. and a half gigabyte download that uh, of an iOS update. <laughs> oh yeah. So I'm you guessing have to do in it, my right? case it's probably okay. in there. Let me try it this one. What does a duck sound like? That's what a duck sounds like? That's disgusting. That's, that's not what Looney Tunes taught me. <laughs> what about quack, quack? I mean, at least it's not a Canadian What goose. does a duck sound I like? I think it's scary. It's, cow it, it's says. not working that well. Um, so you can say, Apple says there's hundreds of options. What does an oboe sound like? Yeah, so sometimes it gives me a picture and a, a play button. Is that an Obo or Odo from D Space Nine? <laughs> what is an Odo? <laughs> what does an Odo sound like? How about this one? What does a humpback whale sound like? No, see, it's just it's not playing it. It's just giving me a button. I thought it was just gonna play. Whoa. Rosemary. <laughs> I mean, if you have a home pod, then uh, it, it should just auto. -play. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. On an, that's right. So on an iPhone or iPad, you get a picture of the animal and a link to more information. But it makes sense. If you didn't have a screen, it would. Uh... And of course, we're what just taking a fire their truck sound like. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm not. I'm getting an audio sample. Hey, that's, let's, that's let's not what a some, fire truck sounds like. That's a horn. Let's, let's, well, let's actually, try something interesting. Fire trucks sound different in every country. That's true. Yes. That's what I was going to say. I was wondering if it's localized. Like, if you, yeah, what, what does a, what's a police siren sound like? Does it go, yeah. in what does the a UK police and, siren in the UK sound like? So that'd be useful. It sounds like stop or will y'all stop again? No. Here's what I found on the web. I mean, today when I was driving, it just went dee 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 dee, and I just pulled over to the side of the road, and the police went past. So oh, isn't that I'm guessing polite. that's not their usual the siren. They're very polite in Bristol. Uh, so anyway, you could try a few things: a cat, a lion, an eagle, a kookaburra. Apparently, there's hundreds. La cuca la racha, la cuca la racha. But I think. Honestly, it's going to confuse kids if you ask for what a duck sounds like and you hear that. You should just go quack, quack. <laughs> and then kids will understand. I'm just saying, you know.
this reminds me of an article I read many years ago where uh, somebody was saying that uh, Siri was one of her son's best friends and her son um, had or has a form of autism and just gets very sucked into topics and asks questions for hours. Um, and obviously, as humans, some of us are not so great at handling that. And also with jobs, you know, you have to go and do other things. And uh, Siri was great because it could answer all or tried to answer all the questions and gave links. And he was able to, you know, learn loads of things through Siri. Um, and I can imagine that this for kids and, you know, everybody else is going to be great fun. My uh, God, kids, before they could talk and before they could before they could talk, before they could read or write, would use Siri to send and receive iMessages with their parents. That's pretty cool. They didn't have to read. They didn't have to write. They would just say right. they would see it. Siri would read it to them. They would dictate their response and they were totally using all the technology. Consider the source on this next story, the New York Post. Jessica Johnson is a real estate broker in Wilton, Connecticut. She has a six-year-old son, George. Uh, she did not realize that George <laughs> was playing a Sonic uh, on the iPad, Sonic Forces, and buying add-on boosters. He started in July with buck ninety-nine red rings. Eventually, moved up to ninety-nine dollar gold rings. On July 9th, a day when Jessica was working in the next room, there were charges, twenty-five of them totaling two thousand five hundred dollars. She says it's like my six-year-old was doing lines of cocaine and doing bigger and bigger hits. Eventually, uh, Chase told her it's probably fraud, but eventually she figured out. It wasn't fraud. It's George. Uh, and he ended up charging $25,000 uh, uh, of merchandise, actually $16,000 of merchandise um, on virtual gold rings. <laughs> when she contacted, now this is the part I don't know about. When she contacted Apple, Apple said, oh, gee, this is older than six months. If you would told it about us, us about it then, we could have refunded you. It's too late. Uh, she, uh, she says, Apple said, tough. They told me because I didn't call within 60 days of the charges. They can't do anything. She said, I didn't call because Chase told me it was probably fraud. And sh um, she says, there's a setting you should have known. Apple says you should have known there's a setting. So well, there's no not set. Like I, I've seen a lot of reporting on this, and there's it's not a setting. Like you, you have to go out of your way to let someone. You have to let it turn up. it on. And, I, and I'm not blaming the user. No, it's like it'll still ask you for a password after 15 minutes unless you right. set them up with touch. Like it's a bad. I thought the she I think went the, the extra length to get jo let George so that George wouldn't bother her. Yes. <laughs> and George took yeah, advantage of it. Touch ID. Yeah. yeah. And then she enabled purchases with Touch ID, which like I never want to blame a user. Should never be a user's problem. I feel like I want to blame these games for having these in-app purchases. I feel like that's yeah. where every ounce of my anger and rage should go and for Apple allowing them on the store to begin with. Um, but it's, it's basically handing the kids a, a key to your bank account with these things at that point. I do yeah, think Apple should probably, cities. after all this publicity, just say, okay, fine. But it's going to come out of their pocket because I'm sure they've paid Sega already for this right that's, yeah that's the problem 60 days later the money already went there mm. why don't they yeah. pay twenty thousand dollars to a game though i mean that that just should not it shouldn't be possible if you want to exactly yeah, exactly yeah yeah. That's what that's what yeah. I have to say. Wasn't there some sort of a uh, just some some sort of a crash guard that you have to disable in order to spend more than a certain amount? That has nothing to do with the game code itself. That Apple is just without you don't have to do any settings. If if this if this crash guard if this upper limit bothers you, then you have to go figure out how to eliminate this two hundred dollar no. a month. No, uh, nobody should boundary. be allowed to spend sixteen thousand dollars in six months. No, no, on no a I'm game saying, I'm saying that's it. Just not that's that's me and Leo. There should be no way through it. That's it. Yeah. Period. Yeah. That's ridiculous. And uh, yeah, the, the question is, where do you draw the line with something like this, right? Because, yeah. for example, there are great pro apps out there that genuinely are worth the money, and you know they, you know, you buy a couple of those in a month. You're starting up a new business. Say, for example, you True. pick up OmniGraffle and OmniPlan, and then you know you go out and you buy Ferrite and a bunch of other things as well. Suddenly, you know, there's twenty dollars here, a hundred dollars there. It does add up very quickly, and that's a legitimate use case. Right. Um, obviously, in this case, you should not give your children access to just buy things. Um, 
on you know your device that's got your if credit it, card information. If it Same weren't the New York Post, I might give it yeah. more credence. I feel like well, probably. There was, there was a story about a kid who was just ordering off Amazon all the time too. Like there, these right. like once you give them unfettered access to a right. device that has your credit card information pre-built into yeah. it, and it's your problem, not Amazon's. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. like the kid that ordered the giant banana through an Echo. Um, you yeah. know, the, yeah. because dollhouse, they dollhouse, wanted dollhouse. the banana. Right. Yeah, banana the, toy the, or something, and then this giant banana appeared. <laughs> <laughs> the the, dif the difference here, though, is though, is that these games they really are programmed with psychological. I agree. Hacks. Yeah. They, they are crack. Miles, right? They it's are not whales like yeah. casinos. Yeah. Right. So yeah. they 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 hit you with these offers at a time when they know that your your brain chemistry is not really at its at its most critical thinking part, and more of the oh that means I can't have the little hula girl, uh, the hula girl who hula girl unicorn fire blaster. Yes, yes, I've had that. And so the, the, that the amount like of whales, manipulation like, means that I think there should be some sort of limits on uh, above and beyond what the game controllers want to put. I in. would gladly pay a hundred dollars for the lighthouse on my Animal Crossing. Island. See, it's it's you, Leo. It's you and P Diddy who's spending <laughs> but, ten grand on like Blinky Blink every but, weekend. But to and Nintendo's the credit, in they don't have in-app purchases in that game. They yeah. could be making yeah. they're they're foregoing. I am certain billions of dollars in revenue. But mm -hmm. once you buy the game, everything else is free, and that's that. And I think that that's. By the way, I'm so, so addicted what, to that game. I think it's a good thing. <laughs> when you look at what Pokemon Go has taken in and what Fortnite has taken oh, in, just yeah. the sheer amount of money and yeah. all they're getting is digital goods. Like they're right. getting emotes and skins and polka coins and like nothing of real value. Uh, it's stupefying how much money they're pulling in on those transactions. Yeah. You you, yeah. you make a really excellent point that in order for that to have happened without the mother's interaction, because asked to buy is on by, is on by default, yeah. she mm -hmm. would have had to take extra steps to give that kid uh, access. Yeah. yeah, she also probably set that iPad up for herself rather than setting it up for George. Um, because if th she set it up for him, then it would automatically send all purchase requests through to Good her. Point. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, so then it would have popped up on her phone and yeah, I can see that being annoying and interrupting if you're trying to get your work done, but unfortunately parenting is not the easiest job. Now that's not to say that, you know, there, there aren't, you know, lots of other things that you can do with your children. But if, if you can't say, Hey, sweetie, don't do this because mommy's working. We'll look at this later. Then, uh, you know, I, I think you need to, uh, potentially set up your iPad differently. Renee, do yeah. you, have you ever tried to figure out how much you spent on Pokemon Go? Well, I mean, up until this March, it was all going straight to, to Mobile Nations and Future. So it was fine. Oh, was, now it's on your it was, card. <laughs> yeah, and, but now like a com through a confluence of many things, I don't, have, I, don't, I don't have to write about it anymore. Like it was the second most popular oh, okay. topic on iMore after iPhones. Right, right. Like before iPads, before Apple Watches, all of those things. So, so it was it was well worth it. Lisa, uh, then you probably know, though, that we have now higher trainer levels than 40. Yes. Lisa had been playing hard ever since she got to 40. And I thought, by God, as soon as they expand this, she's going to go to level yeah. 60, right? She's at 41. It's hard. But yes. if you would like to play with Lisa, <laughs> I offer now her trainer code so you can become her friend. She's very active. And she very much wants to get to level 60. What is the top? Is it 60? What is it? It's 50 right now. 50. But the, the thing is that it's not just hard. It, they made it tedious. Like I saw I, level 43 is like you have to catch 430 Pokemon in a day and do 430 of something else. And like I don't mind if there's a variety of things, but doing one thing 430 times in a day, <laughs> I, I'm just never going to do it. I know. It. That's why I play Animal <laughs> Planet. Because once you've mined all... Uh, all four uh, fossils and hit six rocks, watered your garden. Tedium uh, shouldn't be the challenge. You shouldn't have to beat <laughs> tedium There's to go to the next No step. grinding. Her trainer code, 1400 7295 And uh, she's going to call me in about a minute saying, what the hell? All these people are asking awesome. to be my friend. What's going on? She wanted yeah. this. So I'm, I'm doing it for you, honey. That's your Christmas gift. Enjoy it. <laughs> uh, if only that were true. Um, all right, let's take a little break. And then you guys are going to suggest a Christmas gift. I should mention for all of our family or a Hanukkah gift or a Kwanzaa gift or a Festivus gift, I should mention that next week is our best of episode. So we will not be here uh, December 22nd as we get ready for the Christmas season. We'll be back, though, on the 29th. We are doing a show. I should warn you 
<laughs> Renee and uh, and Andy will be doing a show on the 29th. And I think that's going to be kind of a look back. You know, the 22nd will be the best of. Uh, but the 29th, I think, maybe a look back at some of the most interesting, important Apple stories, trends in 2020, yes. and things to look ahead for 2021, something like that. Because It's not going to be New Year, so it's fine. We don't do New, New Year Year's. early, Leo. They won't <laughs> announce a Mac Pro or anything like that. It's, it's going to be, we're, we're doing it like one of those clip shows on a sitcom where it's like we, we got trapped in an elevator. We thought, you know, Renee, this is just like back in February when you were talking about Apple Silicon. We did that. That's next show. week. That's next week. We did that. I got all dressed up for it. Our show today oh, brought to you. see us? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, you're going to see us in February before we knew what 2020 was going to be like. Oh, my God. I know. <laughs> so young, so innocent. That's the funny thing about doing these best ofs is it starts innocent. <laughs> And then, yeah. it gets, and then it gets, oh my, oh my, oh. Um, now I don't know what we're in our second. second our concerns wedding. will be so silly and pe like pathetic in February yeah, and January. Right. We won't know. <laughs> our show today is brought to you by Twilio. Uh, Twilio is built by developers for developers. If it's time to build, if it's time to add new ways to communicate with your customers. Twilio is the first place you can go. Engage customers on any channel, anywhere they are, from text messages to emails to phone calls to video and more, all in one single powerful platform. Twilio is big. They power more than 795 billion interactions across channels with five nines of uptime, 99.999% uptime, 3 billion phone numbers available across more than 100 countries. Some of the biggest in the business use Twilio. Shopify uses Twilio to run their entire global contact center. More than a million cust customers. They use Twilio's uh, programmable contact center solution for that. Twilio Flex. Blue Apron uses Twilio to power their newsletter letter emails. That's the Twilio Send Grid. Uh, Netflix uses Twilio for two-factor authentication. I use Twilio's Authy app for my two-factor authenticator. If you're on Uber or Lyft and you're getting deliveries or rides, those text messages that come to say your driver's on his way, that's Twilio. Of course it's Twilio. Products and operations teams use Twilio to create new ways to communicate with their users inside applications all the time, ranging from account notifications with text messaging to chat bots to securing online accounts with two-factor authentication. I found a really interesting uh, Twilio application the other day. I was uh, reading Hacker News, capiche.fm. This is a way you could podcast by talking into your phone. And, of course, they stream to the whole world, and it's based on Twilio. Twilio is truly an amazing product. I want you to check it out. Go to twilio.com. If you know how to build a web application, you can become a sophisticated telecom engineer. You don't have to be, you don't have to know all the ins and outs of the telecom uh, system. Just a few lines and boom, you've got apps that text, call, chat, video conference, e chat bots, emails. It's just an amazing tool built by developers for developers. And it is uh, easily the most popular way to do this. I've, I've had a Twilio account for years just for my hobby stuff. Strengthen your customer relationships by uniting communications across your entire business. Go to Twilio.com. T-W-I-L-I-O. Twilio.com. It's time to build with Twilio. Thank you, Twilio for your support of Mac Break Weekly. You're our guest this week, Rosemary Orchard, so you get to start our Picks of the Week. All right. Well, my Pick of the Week, uh, I'm going to be thanking a friend for this because I was forwarded a tweet which contained the Blob Orchestra. Oh, now, the Blob Orchestra. What's that? The Blob Orchestra. <laughs> it is a, a little thing from Google um, where you get four blobs on your screen. Yeah. Um, and it will walk you through how to uh, play with the blobs. So you've got uh, a bass. Let me turn on with. my sound so we can hear what I'm doing here. Yeah. And then you have a tenor. <laughs> <laughs> and if you drag forwards and backwards as well, then you also get different files. And uh, yeah, each each additional blob increases. Uh, all of them sing together if you pull the leftmost one. So. 
Yeah. And uh, it's cute and it's fun. Um, and then when you're done with the tutorial, this is the best part of it. Yes. So you can record in the bottom left, but over in the bottom right, yes. you click on the Christmas tree. Oh, no. They're going to sing? They get hats. There's snow. And oh. then you can pick a festive song oh, let's and they will sing. <laughs> And I just thought this was incredibly cute and This fun. is so cute. And, uh, yeah. And you the can mute each individual blob as well. So if you're interested in how the music is constructed, then you can just mute three of them, say, and just figure out which one is doing what. Uh, can I say that every every single time there's been a commercial or I've been playing with this for the last two hours since you talked about it before we started doing the show. This is just the most fun thing I have discovered <laughs> or I have been told about in a long, long oh, time. Thank you. Thank you. This is great. I love it. This well, is so good. Kudos to my friend Chris who forwarded the link to me um, <laughs> because uh, otherwise I would have skipped it. Uh, I hadn't noticed it on Twitter, but I just thought they're very cute. Um, and also I like the fact that you can make your own with it and uh, record that and then share it. Uh, so if you've got some time this holiday season, you can try making your own carols. Is there anything Google can't do? They're amazing. You know what, EU? Don't find Google. <laughs> just play another song in the blob opera. It's artsandculture.google.com. It's one of their experiments, the Blob Opera. You probably could Google Blob Opera and go straight to it, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. Andy Anako, pick, thank you, Rosemary. Andy Anako, pick of the week. I changed my pick of the week uh, after after uh, Rosemary told me about what her pick of the week was going to be. My pick of the week, of the week this week, remembering this is the last one before Christmas, two uh, perfect Christmas recordings that I rely on the Christmas season all the time. The first one is my favorite Christmas album of all time. Ella Fitzgerald Absolutely. wishes you a swinging Christmas. Absolutely. It is brilliant. just yep. For, yep. for decorating the house, for wrapping gifts, for unwrapping gifts, for just having like the house party. There is no better. It is a, it is a swinging Christmas with Ella Fitzgerald recording this. Uh, and uh, Apple music uh, also has the expanded edition. So there's more Ella to love uh, as, as though we weren't joyous enough with the tracks that had already been released uh the other thing is that, and this has been a tradition we were talking before about like you know the cassette adapter in the car i for ever since i had a ever since like 25 years ago we had a car with a cassette deck in it my holiday tradition has been the audiobook version of patrick stewart's one man show one man show performance of a christmas carol uh you can get it on audible uh so you can use your credits or you just buy it outright it is the most incredible like it's it's a it's uh, he he has been do, even when he was doing Star Trek. He was this is one of his pet projects. Where he would do a one man show. He would rent out a theater and do his one man reading of a Christmas Carol, doing all the voices, Tiny Tim, the women, the men, the Scrooge, everything. Uh, and you can see how perf how perfect every single and considered every single line of this is. Uh, and God bless him. He, they they put him into a studio so he could record it. And I, I've I've gone from the Oops. cassette to buying it on Audible to having CDs that I could rip and not, and have a co a copyright free, uh, excuse me, a content uh, protection free. Uh, and it, it just is an absolute joy hearing him uh, perform this year after year after year. It is something exceptionally special. It's probably my, my favorite version of A Christmas Carol, all, all media combined. Nice. $10.46 or use your Audible credit. Um, you, you, you pick this every year, every year I've, I've mean to do it and I forget. So I'll do it. I'll do it this year. You'll, for sure. you'll, you'll thank yourself. For I get, doing this. I get a credit in a, in a week. So I'll, I'll be highest, listening. highest possible recommendation. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Thank you, Andy. Renee Ritchie, your pick of the week. So I've got two. And the first one is just something I've been trying to do for months and for a variety of reasons. Uh, couldn't get it done as early as I wanted. But uh, I'm putting up uh, masks on my channel and all the profits, all the proceeds, everything we get from them is going to go to the COVID relief efforts. We haven't found the exact place they're going to go yet. Uh, so if anyone has any recommendations, because it turned out that that was one of the complicated parts is that there are so many places from food banks to, uh, you know, just direct support to some of the bigger agencies. So we're trying to find the, the, the most helpful place we can go. So if anybody has any recommendations, nice. any favorites, please let me know. But they're available now and every penny we make from them is going to go to as much COVID relief as we possibly can. 
Uh, and the second one is Apple rolled out a new search engine option uh, this week with the software updates. Previously, you had, you know, Google, uh, whatever was left of Yahoo and DuckDuckGo. <laughs> and now they've added uh, Ecosia. I think that's the right way to explain it to uh, pronounce it. It's EC Planet Earth, S-I-A. And you can set this as your default search engine. And then any revenue generated from ads shown in the search engine will be donated to trees. And I've seen some back and forth of them. People were asking some questions and they don't just, you know, plant it and go. They they stick around. They try to make sure those trees are viable, that they're planted in responsible areas, that they're cared for, they're nurtured. You know, they get things like water and sunlight. Uh, so if you don't want to use Google, uh, DuckDuckGo is just not your thing. You don't mind ads, but you'd prefer the revenue go not to a giant, you know, internet corporation, but to reforesting the planet that we all depend on for oxygen. You can use Ecosia, and then every time you see a search and see an ad, a little bit of those get, goes to making the planet uh, green again. Is the search pretty good? Uh, I, I, I hate to be to pick on. I, I find it better than DuckDuckGo. <laughs> of course, it's not as good as Google. It's because Google has such a head start, such a scale, and, and just such good algorithms. But I think like if, if you're not stuck on Google or you don't particularly like Google, it's it's a good second it's a good option to have. Very nice. E C O S I A uh from I guess they're German because it's uh, G M B H um yeah. seven languages and you can now add it to your iPhone as a And sometimes a Google is search. too good. Like you get too many results or the results are just uh -huh. too like too Google. And so I, I like sometimes I sometimes like the old days, Leo, back when we had all the different search engines from Alta Vista to you know to, to go through. I like to spread my searches around now. Yeah, I feel the same way, but I also feel like there is nothing as good as Google, which is unfortunate. No. I want to try Ecosia. It's very easy to change a search engine in the Safari settings. I've just yep. done that. Uh, I should mention, uh, if you have an M1, uh, Safari is mind-bogglingly fast. So fast. It's it's kind of feels like, uh, what? Like, have I been suffering all this time? Uh, Google very quickly did an M1 native version of Chrome. Firefox has just announced that their M1 native version of Firefox is out. That's the browser I use because it's open source. Yeah. I want to support them. I feel like they're struggling a little bit uh, financially. And I really want, I think it's so important that we have some diversity. At least we have WebKit with Safari and uh, Chromium-based browsers with uh, Google Edge and others. But I think let's keep Firefox and Brave too. And Brave is an option too, yeah. yeah. Uh, i just a big fan. And all the plugins and the extensions and the privacy focus, uh, which, by the way, I think Firefox probably does the best of blocking Facebook crap. Yeah. Um, I, so I'm really, really happy. I'm trying to use mo almost everything native on the M1. I don't want to even do any Rosetta yeah. 2 stuff. So now that there's a native version of Firefox, I'll see how the battery uses. I have to say Safari is mind-bendingly so good. Did you see the brouhaha over the weekend, Leo? Uh, about? Chrome and uh, Keystone? Yeah, I did. And it was BS as far as I could tell. Although, before I figured that out, I did delete Chrome and Keystone and all the com.google.chrome <laughs> stuff uh, on so my Mac just in case. There's been, a, there's been a plot twist. So I was involved in that too because I saw Lauren's tweet and I've been having the exact same problem. Like oh. it was so bad trying to render videos the premise embargoes was that I wanted to throw my Mac. If, uh, even if you didn't have Chrome running, Keystone was always running in the background. And uh, even maybe if you uninstall Google, it might still be running. I'm not sure. So it was even worse than that. So the hard part was that it, it looked to Lauren, and Lauren, like people who don't know Lauren, he worked at the GL stack at Apple. He invented, literally invented pull to refresh. He made Tweety, which became the original Twitter client. Uh, and he also made letterpress. And what it would look to him like was happening is that Keystone would try to update, somehow fail, so it wouldn't appear in Activity Monitor, but it would be enough to rev up Windows Server trying to launch over and over again, and that would suck down resources. because oh, the Windows Server bug is a well-known bug, right? But maybe it's This is a Chrome's, different one, though. Yeah. Oh, it's a new one? Oh, okay. Yeah, so, uh, and maybe, it may, it may not be, it could be Chrome. It may be a way that Chrome is interacting with the with the newer versions of Windows Server. It could be that something unrelated is causing a problem. We don't know, but it solved his problem. It has solved my problem, and I was going to throw my computer. Um, ben Thompson did it, and he's no dummy either, and he said it completely fixed. He was ready to buy a new computer. Wow. It completely fixed his problem, and the Chrome team, they are fantastic. The Chrome team was engaging immediately. They were all over this, and they've now put up, uh, they filed their own bug for it. They're asking people who are going to oh. install it to take a snapshot before and after. Oh. 
Um, yeah, we're mentioned in there as anecdotalers, which I think is amazing. <laughs> well, the, their first uh, reaction, I saw this seriously. first on Reddit, their first reaction was to poo-poo it. And, yeah. uh, and there was a lot of uh, traffic on Reddit saying, this is BS, blah, blah, blah. So I, uh, but I did, it's funny because I did it anyway. Because <laughs> why not? Dechrome your, uh, dechrome your Macintosh anyway. But uh, it's not I'm, Chrome though, it's Keystone. Because like if you use Chromium and you're not using that up, and there's a whole other thing because that updater is basically non-consensual. And some people believe you should have consent to update, on, yeah. especially on the Mac, like with Sparkle or the App Store. Well, the fact that it's not asked, visible in activity wanna... monitor, I think, is not great. It will um, show up when it's actually doing the update part, but there, but that that has to spawn through LaunchD. It's a whole complicated thing, and that's part of it is that it's so opaque that it's like dark matter. You can only measure measure it by its effects on other things. Right. Uh, Lauren has put a, put together a post at chromeisbad.com. Yeah, he was so angry. He shouldn't have written this when he was this angry, though. I mean, this is the toned down version. <laughs> Somewhat partisan, you might say. Uh, it's well, Lauren he, Brichter, who is a well-respected guy in the Mac uh, developer community, though. So what is Lauren's... Uh, he does... Um, he had not do anything anymore. I think he just, he's building his own. But I, I, I honestly, like he rewrote UI kit on the Mac himself before Apple did. Right. I'm pretty sure he's rewritten it in WebGL by now. Right. He's smart guy. Super like 9,000 IQ. Yeah. 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 Uh, he says Safari is good. It's already on your Mac. Use it. Um, or, and uh, Guy Rambo said he can't find anything wrong with it. So like there's different right. people having different opinions that I really respect. Uh, but that just shows how hard it is to diagnose things on modern computer systems with millions of individual components bouncing off each other all the time. Keystone, I was wondering about the name and then I remember Keystone was the original, is the name of the group that does the Google Maps uh, yeah. data. Is uh, Keystone. Yeah. And so I have it a feeling it's an ancient technology that started... Uh, with Google Earth, and then has slowly migrated to other Google products. Wired called it evil 11 years ago, just because of <laughs> how it worked with wow. Google Earth. But, wow. And Mac Observer had a, an article about it five years ago, showing that you could also turn off the, like, set the update time to zero. But I worry about that, because if you're leaving Chrome running, it should get updated. Otherwise, it's a big security problem. So I wouldn't recommend you just disable Keystone and keep using Chrome. Uh, yeah, I just got rid of everything that had the word Google in it. <laughs> Very happy. Didn't didn't bother me one bit. I would love to put it on. I just if it, so far I haven't had that problem again. If I have it back, I'll put Chrome back on in a hot second. Right. I just can't afford to have like beach balls over and over again no. while I'm trying to do a yeah. video. The reason I put Chrome on in the first place was because one, it was a M1 native, but two, I wanted to play Stadia. I was, and it looks yeah. like it turns out it's the best way to play Cyberpunk is to play it instead on a server via Stadia uh, because if you a run it on your A lot of people are hardware, coding for Chrome now instead of the web, which is yeah. another problem that we're going to have no to figure kidding. out. No kidding. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, an interesting... Um, controversy which google seems to be responding to so that's uh, that's the which i'm really happy about yeah. that's all you can ever ask yeah um i'm i'm gonna go home and install install firefox but i, I have to say <laughs> safari is so fast it's like why would you use anything else it's pretty good ladies and gentlemen we have concluded this episode of mac break weekly uh renee ritchie is at youtube.com slash renee ritchie he does write from time to time for iMore. In fact, he wrote that article about uh, all of this Keystone controversy for iMore. Anything else you want to plug? Your Apple Talk show you do with the great Georgia Dow? Yeah, and I, I, I managed to convince her. Well, she didn't take that much of it. She started her own YouTube channel now. She hasn't got any videos up yet, but she's going to start doing her. a lot of the stuff that she talks about on psychology and, and things like that on YouTube Good. in digestible format. So it should be Good. fun. Good. Very nice. Thank you, Renee. Andy and Anko, when are you going to be on WGBH Boston next? Uh, this week I'm on that Thursday at uh, 1.20 in the afternoon for about a half an hour. As usual, go to WGBHnews.org to stream it either live or later. They usually, usually have my segment up about three hours later. I do have a couple of other things to plug this week. Um, now that I have a, now that I have an M1 Mac and <laughs> that, from a, a recent Mac that is capable of streaming well, I decided to see what streaming works on this thing. So I'm doing a live stream on 
on YouTube tonight if you're watching oh. live uh, so at 8 p.m. You can get the link off of my Twitter feed. Just go to uh, Anatko, spell my last name. That's the cost of admission. Uh, also, uh, our friend Alex Lindsay invited me to be a guest on his Office Hours uh, stream on Thursday. So uh, that's going to be like 11, 11 o'clock Eastern time, 8 a.m. Uh, Western time. So, yeah, I'm going to have to shave every day, which is not usually how I try to work things out. <laughs> Uh, that's great. And when you talk to Alex, tell him to answer my email. I've been begging him to come on the show. And I don't know. He's never answered it. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, Alex, like many of us, no longer can see he his only email because now. there's so much crap. Yeah. He got rid of voicemail. Then he got rid of email. Now it's all tweets. All tweets all the way down. TikTok him, Leo. TikTok him. And we love you, Rosemary Orchard. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. I hope you will make your way yeah, yeah. back here again very soon. RosemaryOrchard.com. Uh, you do podcasts, anything you want to plug? Uh, well, I've been working on a fun show for Screencast Online, which should be out early in the new year. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out oh, for that. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, please give my regards to Don. Uh, I will do. Yeah. I didn't realize, I guess I did realize you're doing stuff with him. Yeah, that's great. You both sound the same. You both have that weird accent <laughs> thing going on. I sound much more American than I do British you most do. of the time, I'm afraid. You do. He has he has quite of a Scouse kind of uh, thing going on. I don't know what's... He's a Liverpudlian. He's a yeah. Liverpudlian, yeah. Uh, so uh, great to have you, Rosemary. Come back again soon, and uh, we'll see you soon, I think. A reminder Hopefully. that, that uh, next week we will uh, be doing the best of on Mac Break Weekly. The following week we'll be back with a look back at the year. And a look ahead into 2021. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday right after iOS Today. And because uh, iOS Today can go long, it's sometime between 11 and noon Pacific time. That's 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern time. It's roughly 2100 UTC if you want to watch live. Uh, there's a live audio and video stream at twit.tv slash live. And if you're watching live, chat with us, IRC. Dot twit dot TV. On demand versions of every show we do are available at our website, twit.tv. In this case, twit.tv slash MBW for Mac Break Weekly. There's a Mac Break Weekly YouTube channel where all the shows appear in video. Best thing, though, if you would subscribe to our podcast in your favorite podcast application, that way you'll get it automatically. It's uh, no charge, it's just automatic, and you get it the minutes available of a Tuesday afternoon. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you in a bit. Have a happy holiday, uh, whatever whatever winter solstice you celebrate. I hope you celebrate it with joy and health. Uh, we will see you before the new year. But now it's time to get back to work because break time is over. Bye-bye. Want more twit? Well, you got to check out iOS Today. It's the show where Leo Laporte and I talk about everything to do with iOS, iPadOS, tvOS, watchOS. It's all the devices, all the best apps, games, and services, everything in between, plus a whole lot of laughter. Twit.tv slash iOS for iOS Today.